How's it going, boys, girls, and squirrels? And today, I'm finally getting my license to be an anime content creator. My whole YouTube career, anytime I've mentioned that I haven't seen Full Metal Alchemist or Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood before, Oh boy, here come the comments. This guy runs an anime YouTube page and hasn't seen Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. Guys, they don't test you when you sign up for a YouTube channel. It's not like Google's got agents knocking at my door like, here, piss in this cup. It'll tell us if you've seen Comey Can't Communicate. But you guys are right. I should have some more credentials under my belt. So today, I'm ditching the learner's permit moving on to an official license. That means legally, from this point on, until I finish this series, I will be known as Wart Jr. Then, in a few months' time, you'll be watching content from your favorite YouTuber, Rooney. Officer, I'm telling you, it's a valid license. If you would just check my YouTube page- Please, I can't go to jail! Anyway, uh, let's get into it. Sir, uh, one last thing. Our rising young star is here as well. I'm placing him at your disposal. Forgive me, Fuhrer Bradley, but just to be clear- Fuhrer? Bradley? First off, wild that this takes place in Germany. But honestly, I do love when anime takes place in countries outside of Japan. I, I don't know, that's just cool to me. Like, I love that Banana Fish takes place in America. Him being a Fuhrer isn't my issue. At least, depending on the year this takes place. My issue is that his name is Fuhrer Bradley. There are just some names that don't work at the end of Titles of Authority. Men, I know we've all faced great challenges, but today... We take back our homeland. Today we survive. Today we win. Or my name isn't Captain Kevin. Sounds like a bunch of toddlers are playing at a playground. And one of them's like, I want to be Fuhrer Brandon. And then the teachers are like, um, are you sure you don't want to be King Brandon? And then he's like, yeah, Fuhrer King Brandon. Edward Elric. Ah, uh, damn it. The Colonel's never going to let us out of here, is he? We already bought our tickets for Lior, too. What a hard introduction to this character's voice. Full transparency, Alphonse's voice was the sole reason I've never watched this show. Like, I've had opportunities. This show was always on Adult Swim when I was growing up. My dumb idiot kid brain was always like, why does the cool guy have a stupid voice? Like, I thought it was a bit. I thought the show was doing a gag by making him sound like this. <laughs> That way! You halt! Halt or I'll shoot! Oh, but you didn't expect a robo hand, bitch! Water freezes, water boils. Either way, you're just as dead. Hi, yeah, I'd like to schedule a tattoo appointment? Yeah, it's this awesome quote I just heard in an anime. No, I just started it. I'm like two minutes into the first episode. Hello? If that skit wasn't clear enough, that was the coolest collection of words I've ever heard come out of somebody's mouth. I also like... <laughs> I like how subtle the kills were, if that makes sense. I like how he just ran up to one guy and grabbed him, and then he just like... <sighs> like, it wasn't this big Todoroki-style, like, ice shards come all out of him. He just like, freezes and is dead. <laughs> Why does this one have his little face on it? Edward's over here advertising his new line of merch dropping this fall. And who has an auto male right arm. I know you. You are the Full Metal Alchemist. I know you. You are the Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood Episode 1. I've heard the stories, but still I never imagined this. The Full Metal Alchemist is just a little kid. Don't call me little! <laughs> You know, brother. Edward, is this really worth torturing this guy over? Also, everyone's always talking about Trunks being a male crop top icon. Edward's looking fresh in his crop jacket over here. Edward's arguably looking fresher than Trunks, dare I say. I don't think he was really talking about your height just now. <laughs> Well, even if he wasn't, he still pissed me off! I wonder if the animators love drawing Alphonse like this. Like, Alphonse is such an insanely detailed character. I wonder if the animators are just like, Look, I'll do it, but like, five shots per episode? I'm gonna draw him with all the detail of a Pillsbury Doughboy. Is that good with you? We have a deal. Now then, his name is Isaac McDougal. Or as he was known back in the day, Isaac the Freezer. Isaac McDougal? Why do all these characters sound like middle school history teachers? Mr. McDougal, can I use the bathroom? It's Isaac the Freezer! I told you, you don't have to ask to use the bathroom. Just quietly and politely get up and go without disrupting the class. Taking him into custody is a matter of top priority. Whether it's dead or alive, that's up to him. No way, I'm not killing anyone for you. Well, I'm not... 
killing anybody, so you better, better not make me try and kill a guy. Roy, how goes? Heard you let him put you in charge of catching the freezer, huh? One hell of a nasty assignment. But hey, could be your chance to earn that promotion to Central! I like that I was kind of right about the animators hating to draw Alphonse. Look, I'll do it, but his head's gonna look like a condom at least once every 10 episodes. Is that a deal? Do we have a deal? Look at him, he looks like Pun Pun from the neck up. I'm actually his younger brother, Alphonse. What? You're the Full Metal Alchemist? Sorry, I had no idea you'd be so- Go on, say little. He was probably gonna say so not full of metal. Edward, it's kind of tough for people to know which one of you is the Full Metal Alchemist, one of you is a possessed suit of armor, and the other one's just a guy. Maybe you could be the just a guy alchemist. That's got a good ring to it. My wife, Gracia, and my daughter, Alicia, we'd love to have you! Is this Krillin? Are they about to get adopted by fucking Krillin? This dude is giving me the most uncomfortable vibes, and it's primarily because he looks just like Anderson from Helsing Abridged. Or I guess, just from Helsing, but Abridged is where I know Anderson from. Okay, eat up! <laughs> Thanks! Wow, you're getting- this is great! Don't be shy. Okay, now I've really got beef with this guy, because he kinda looks like me. I feel like we've got the same hair right now. All I need are glasses and a hundred more pounds of muscle. It looked a lot like mom's, huh? Yeah, almost as good, too. Really? In that case, I'm definitely adding it to the list of things I'm gonna eat once I get my body back. <laughs> oh... oh boy, whoa. Whoa, I've already got an oof and we're only ten minutes into the first episode. I think that's a record for this page. Five men dead! How awful. It looks like a steam explosion. Raise the temperature of water fast enough, it expands with the force of a bomb blast. And the human body is 70% water. This dude looks pretty unexploded, considering 70% of him just... You know, exploded. This guy should look like the fish that always hated chocolate from Spongebob if 70% of his body exploded. Also... Why does Alphonse have this giant apron on him? He either looks like a big samurai chef or he's hiding a giant metal dick. Impressive reflexes, Isaac. You are able to dodge my alchemy so easily. I know that voice. Is that you, Armstrong? Indeed! Hey there, All Might. I love a character who's just hyped to exist. Like, that's how I'm gonna start answering my phone from now on. Hey, Danny, is that you? Indeed! Anyway, can you come pick me up? The other kids are drinking. <laughs> Except you'll need far more than water to quench my fists! You got a couple of thirsty fists there, do you, Armstrong? <laughs> water from his canteen, huh? Thanks for the quick save, Al. Let's go, he's getting away! What are these little cheek slits in Al's armor for? Like, the armor has eye holes. Are the slits so your opponent can see you blushing? In case a samurai's gotta pull a quick uwu on the battlefield? It's been a long time, Freezer. Well, speaking of abridged series, God, Team Four Stars really had a major cultural impact on the anime community, haven't they? Still there. Perfect. Stop, right there. I was wondering what you were doing in this alley, so I came back to check it out. And bingo! <laughs> I was wondering what you were doing in this alley, so I came back to check it out. And bingo, bongo, boongo. Bloop, 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 dibbity doop. How was that, Al? Was that a cool catchphrase? Not really. An alchemic reaction. On this scale? Impossible. Unless... you don't think he's... <laughs> a philosopher's stone! There is a lot going on right now. I'm admittedly very lost. I told you I don't care! <laughs> I like the little sidestep he did there. Yeah! You get him, Al! Whoops! Oh, poor Armstrong. What the heck are you doing? You're making it worse! Ooh, will you try something then, bitch? I see. It all makes sense. You fools committed the ultimate taboo! You attempted human transmutation, didn't you? The ultimate taboo, huh? Doesn't seem so bad when you call it that. It's like accusing them of committing the ultimate oopsie-daisy. This could be happening in- No! God, what have I done? Never mind, the consequences of the ultimate taboo are pretty severe, it turns out. You know, there are some lines you really shouldn't cross. Are you referring to his major act of terrorism or him calling you out for your oopsie? Why can't you fools understand? 
I'm trying to save this country! God, finally somebody tackling the real issues. Healthcare? More like who cares? Racism? Get out of my facism. I've been saying for years, you know what this country needs? Four massive pillars of ice intersecting at the center of a major city. That'll turn our nation around. <laughs> Perfect! All right, but that's like so much blood. It's probably all the blood a person has in their body at any given time. It would be cool if he did that and then like passed out midway through the spear being formed. That'd be a really cool visual way of conveying the law of equivalent exchange or whatever. That's one of the few things I do know about this show is people love throwing out the law of equivalent exchange at me. I know that uh, and I know because that's 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 pretty cool. I like that. Sure, but the Fuhrer's telling everyone it was you. So congratulations. Oh, it's like that, huh? Suit yourself, but some friendly advice. Jesus, this guy got so sassy so fast. Congratulations! Oh, it's like that, huh? Well, in that case, I just came in to tell you to go fuck yourself. Mm -hmm. Greetings, Edward Elric. When I heard you were in the hospital, I death right over! <laughs> oh, what a, what a dumb big sweetheart. And as I suspected, you're in desperate need of my assistance. <laughs> <laughs> Please stop assisting. This is not how you greet two children recovering in a hospital. Or any setting for that matter. Yeah, but it's not scribbling. Here, watch. Oh my, that's alchemy, isn't it? Hey mom, I just summoned fucking lightning. Could you act a little more impressed? Did your dad teach you that? How can he teach us anything if he's not here? Think, mom, use your brain. I don't know what the father situation is like here, but I feel like the mom shouldn't be making these assumptions so carelessly like that. Oh, did your father teach you that? What's a father? I'm sorry, did we mess up? No, no, <laughs> it's great. You definitely take after your father. I mean, you've certainly messed up the floor and any amount of rain will destroy our house. But the bird was cool. But I thought it said in all the books that using alchemy to make people is something you're not supposed to do ever. That's right. That's why it'll be our secret. Oh boy. Do none of the books explain why you shouldn't use alchemy to bring people back from the dead? Or are they just like, nah, you know, yeah, you probably shouldn't. I feel like that's a subject that requires a more proper warning, not just a cheeky wink and a nod to the reader. You know what my grandma says? She says you shouldn't cry for loved ones who've passed away because when you do, it makes them feel sad in the next world too. Wild don't cry at a funeral take coming from this girl right now. <laughs> Come on, Ed, drink your milk, too. Is it just me, or does Al look fucking huge? Al looks like he'd grow up to be Chris Evans if he never lost his body. Dude looks like a fucking super soldier. Is that the point of this scene right now? That Al used to drink his milk and Ed didn't? And that's why Al is so much bigger than Edward? So, what kind of books are they, anyway? It's a secret. In other words, it's none of your damn business, Winry. I think it's the fact that he's got a neck the size of a tree trunk and is dressed like a Fast and the Furious character that's making him look so big to me. Nice, this looks like it's about to go well. Salt, 250 grams. Saltpeter, 100 grams. Sulfur, 80 grams. Fluorine, 7.5 grams. Wow, we're getting like whole ass instructions here. Has anyone ever copied this and like, you know, brought some broad back from the dead? Ned, something doesn't feel right. Oh, what is your necromancy making you uneasy? Oh, wow, this is going well. <laughs> Wow, this is going well. It can't be a rebound. Brother! Ed's taking this absolute nightmare event surprisingly well. Did you miss the giant eyeball that split your floor open? By the laws of HP Lovecraft, I feel like you guys should have gone insane just from witnessing that. Now, the door is open. None of the books mention any of this. In the chapter about not bringing people back from the dead using alchemy, there's a little asterisk that's like, no, seriously, dude, this shit will fuck you up. This is what we're calling the grand taboo? I see. My theory of human transmutation wasn't wrong. It can be done. It's possible. It's still just missing something. This is such a super villain origin. If Ed's moral compass was just two degrees off, this event would have turned him into the series antagonist. I've already shown you all I can for the toll you've paid. Toll? 
portal. This surely you knew. Oh, wait, I can't want to see this guy become a real boy. Well, Al lost his whole body, so is there a little spirit boy walking around looking like Al right now? Mom, please. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> Jesus Christ! I mean, <laughs> I mean, uh, it worked. Uh, it worked. How doesn't this turn Ed into a super villain? Like, genuinely, how? If I saw just this, not even taking into account the fact that I created this, if I saw this and made the connection that this was my mother, I would kill so many people. I'd just start killing people, dude. I don't know why. It wouldn't be anybody's fault. I, that's just what I do. Never mind, you know what? I'd start with those douchebags who wrote all those alchemy books. Anyone who wrote an alchemy book and did not include the required asterisk under this chapter. Roy! Hey, you're still in Central? Jesus Christ, what a what a juxtaposition. Ah, hey, Roy, catch the big game last night? By the way, I hear those Elric boys committed crimes against the laws of nature last night. He's just a kid. I mean, military life isn't easy, you know. That boy's gonna have to go through hell someday. Someday? This kid's already experienced hell. Everything from this point on is gonna look like purgatory at worst. We're sorry. We didn't mean it. We're sorry. We're sorry. Ah! Lieutenant, kill it! Kill this monster! How long will the surgery and rehabilitation take? I'd say about three years, more or less. I'll do it in one. Wow. Such fire. Such determination. But seriously, three years. I like how they're all impressed. Like they immediately believe he's gonna do it. Al, just hang in there a little longer, okay? Then we're gonna get you your body back, I promise. Right. I'm gonna need a full episode of Al hating being in this armor to convince me that this new body isn't a vast improvement. Look at him, he's sick. He's the coolest guy currently living. Where I can't eat. Children are afraid of me. I wish children were afraid of me. Maybe then I'd stop getting mugged on my way home from the grocery store. Don't ask. Uh, for real, you could try acting more like a girl and less like a gearhead. She's wearing a pink sundress, my dude. It doesn't get much more girl than that. No, that's okay. I got it. <laughs> God, hide your floors when Ed comes to town. They should call this dude the Scourge of Hardwood. But I'd say you still have much to learn about the world. Hmm? <laughs> Holy shit, Fuhrer Bradley goes so hard. That was sick. That was real cool. I expected nothing out of Fuhrer Bradley. And that is episodes one and two of Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. It's funny because I feel almost nostalgic watching this, despite having not seen it. I'm nostalgic because it's taking me back to like 10 p.m. on a school night. I should have been asleep for the past like two hours already. I've got adult swim on incredibly quietly because I've bypassed the parental controls. And Full Metal Alchemist is on and I'm like hardly watching it through half asleep eyes. It's definitely good so far. It's like fast but not in a way. Like I know I made a joke about how I was lost and yeah, I'm not fully caught up with what's happening, but like, at least it throws you into the action from the get-go. And the premise is so cool. The premise is so good. Like these two boys trying to bring their mother back to life, um, rules. And it also kind of like brushes away the fact that Ed is like, probably gonna become the best alchemist ever because he like had this run-in with God or whatever. Like that's sweet. That's a cool way to explain why he is as good as he is at how young he is. Alphonse is sick. I was an idiot as a kid. His design's super cool, and the reason for him being in the armor is great. But yeah, man, I'm so excited to get more into this. Uh, let me know in the comments what you thought of this video, as always. Let me know uh, what your favorite jokes from this video were. It helps me make TikToks, YouTube shorts, blah, blah, blah. And if you like this video, make sure you like and subscribe and share it around to all of your friends who like Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. And I will see you guys next time. How's it going, boys, girls, and squirrels? And we're back watching Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. Brotherhood. So far, pretty great. Pretty great stuff. I was very pleasantly surprised with the first two episodes. Um, however, 
all of that is about to change. In fact, everything is going to change because I wasn't entirely honest with you at the beginning of this reaction series. There is an episode of this show that I've seen, and we're covering it today. You all know what I'm talking about, uh, but my editor, Tom, doesn't. Tom is even more of a wart junior than I am, so he knows truly nothing about this series. If you don't get that joke, make sure you check out my first video on <laughs> Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. So I'm not gonna entirely give away the twist for him just yet, but just know we're, we're on the fast track to heartache today. So what are you guys, like street performers or something? Seriously, do we look like street performers to you? Yes, why ask? This guy's great. Seriously, do we look like street performers to you? Well, I'm looking at a kid in a crop top and some kind of... I don't know, what are you, some kind of monster? So I figure you guys are either here to entertain or kill me. And honestly, I'm hoping it's the first one. Let's go, Al. Oh god, you are here to kill me! Well, get it done quick. I hate to be a burden. Watch and learn, Gramps. Okay, here he goes. God, how does anyone get any alchemy done without being as talented as Ed? Everybody's always like, wow, you did alchemy without using a summoning circle? Does that mean most people need a summoning circle to do alchemy? Bitch, it would take you like a full minute to draw this thing. In what world is fighting with alchemy better than using a gun? No, um, it's not me. Uh-huh. What? You mean it's the little guy there? Oh, Slater, come here and say that to my face! It's because Al's a giant robot, Ed. You gotta stop taking this so personally. He grants eternal life to the souls of the faithful. He can even resurrect the dead. His miracles are proof that what he says is true. Wow, sounds like he's way better than you two bozos. What, too soon? And he's changing organic matter into inorganic matter. He shouldn't be able to do that unless... Yeah, there's just one way. Bingo. Bingo, bongo, bippity dip. Stop trying catchphrases. But I'm so close! Oh, merciful God, please hear me. Hear my prayer, I beg of you. Please bring him back. Yeah. Oh man, this is some classic anime hair. It's funny how anime hairstyles come in and out of style over the years, just like real ones do. I feel like I used to see this cut on like every anime chick in the early 2000s. This is like an Ash's mom haircut, right? Or like a, like a Shaman King haircut. No, not Ash's mom. Who am I thinking of? Who's, there's an anime girl who wears like a pink dress and has this exact same hairstyle. Is it Eris? Is it Eris from Final Fantasy VII? Someone will know what I'm talking about. This is not a unique hairstyle. And through him, all things are possible. If you believed, <gasps> I'm sure Lita would bless you and make you grow taller. What's that supposed to mean? How tall is Edward Elric? Edward is 5'5". Five five. This dude is barely that short. Everybody acts like he's 4'8". He's got like a normal, slightly shorter guy's height. I'm pretty sure Tom Cruise is 5'5", five five, and nobody's ever like, are you sure you're an actor? Phosphorus, 800 grams. Salt, 250 grams. Salt, Peter, 100 grams. And various other trace elements. <gasps> Various other trace elements? Hey, Commander Bozo, maybe your mom came out looking like a burnt sea monkey because you half-assed the tail end of your equation. What, too soon? That list represents the complete chemical makeup of the human body for the average adult. It's been calculated to the last microgram. Yeah, except for that various trace elements part. Please let me know if this is too soon. And you're telling me something modern science can't do, you can do with prayer? Lift thy voice to God! And the prayers of the faithful shall be answered! Oh, true. Did you consider lifting thy voice to God? Down at the market, a kid could buy every one of them for the spare change in his pocket. As it turns out, humans are pretty cheap. Oh, that's blasphemy! Why are you rocking this girl's worldview? Just let her believe in God. She's like about to cry right now. About a hero who flew on wings made of wax. He thought he could touch the sun, but when he got too close, his wings melted and he came crashing back down to Earth. Hey, Ed, could you stop comparing me to Icarus to hit on women? It always hurts my feelings. Ugh, when did Ed turn into such a douche? Sounds like a college freshman who just took his first philosophy course and is hyped to tell his family about it at next year's Thanksgiving. They would only give their names as the Elric brothers. I can't be bothered now. Just send them away. Wait, the Elrics? You're sure that's what they said? You're positive. There's a boy and a man in a suit of armor here to see you, father. They call themselves the Elric brothers. Shut up! Just shut up! Wait. Actually, go on. Good, then it's agreed. We'll make this quick. <coughs> Brother Cray, 
what is this? What do you think you're doing? Quick, L, pull out the chalk. I'm sure he'll give you a full two minutes to draw a summoning circle before he shoots you. I like how none of the guards even bothered to cover L. They aren't holding Ed because he's the bigger threat. They're holding him because they don't want none of that smoke. Look at L all posted up like, dog, try and shoot me. What, you think I wear this apron for fun? I will dice, mince, and saute your ass before you can even remember what pulling a trigger feels like. Oh yeah, strike! What about that reminded you of bowling? You can't just say a sports term during a fight and act like it's applicable. Oh, Danny, why are you nitpicking so much? Am I? Imagine if Ed just yelled touchdown. None of you would have thought that was weird. Yeah, that's what I didn't get at first. How can you perform transmutations that ignore the law of equivalent exchange? As I this poor girl is not ready to sit in on this conversation. I've been looking for that. The ring is just a ring. I am God's humble servant. It is from he alone that I derive my power. The ring is just a ring. Shut up. I got it from the nefarious K jewelers. It has nothing to do with- Would you just shut up for one second? Now, child, I want you to shoot the full metal alchemist. No, I- Mother, I can't do that. What did you think you were picking up the gun for, Rose? Rose, be a deer and pick that gun up off of the floor. Yes, father. And now, be a gem and find a proper reciprocal for it so nobody trips on it. R really? Psych! Kill them! And do you recall what it was I promised you then? You said if I had faith, you'd bring it back to life! No! No, wait! It's not me, Mom, it's- Oh my god, she scared the detail out of hell! <laughs> Good. God, Leto is pleased. You have done well, my child. Now pick up the gun and shoot the other as well. Good job, Rose! That was sick! Now pick up the gun and kill the other one, please. And I believe my Chimera should be up to the task. So this is the sort of thing you do with the Philosopher's Stone. That's just twisted. This is a wild pose to be holding after a six-foot-tall Chimera just strolled up next to you. It's just standing there like, you call that a lion, a goat, and a snake fused into one? As if. I'll show you real quick who the novice is. Full Metal Alchemist. Full Metal Alchemist. Why is the announcer excited when the commercial break starts and then sad when the show comes back? What, are they not paying this guy enough? What's the matter? This is what happens when you try to play God or whatever you want to call it. Take a good look, Rose. Is this what you want? Kinda, yeah, you look pretty sweet. You're making a terrible argument right now for not playing God. Nah, me and God, we don't get along too well. Even if I went, he'd probably just send me right back here. Ugh, Edward, more like Edgelord. I didn't realize Ed was such a little emo. That's far enough. What are you gonna do, boy? You're unarmed and outnumbered. They aren't that unarmed. One of you has a gun and the other one has a long stick. What is there, a gun shortage going on? Can't your boss literally make things from nothing? Believers who would lay down their lives for my sake. I'm slowly building an army, a legion of holy warriors unafraid to die. Yo, is this guy getting cocoed right now? If this guy's getting Disney's cocoed right now, I'm gonna be so annoyed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah? Wait, what are you laughing about? I knew it. You really are a novice, aren't you? Ah, uh, the worst trope. Is there, like, historical precedence for this happening? Like, why do I keep seeing this show up in media? I can't imagine someone could be announcing something to an entire city and somehow not be hearing it themselves. It's a rebound. Oh, that's so sick. What a terrifying consequence. What a massive risk. I feel like alchemy is entirely not worth doing if this is what could happen to you. What you want, you can have it! No! My hubris! I don't know why, but I really want somebody to cast me in a dub of this guy. Stone. He said nothing. He wasn't even about to speak. I feel you though, Ed. There's some people you just want to shut up before they even open their mouths. See every episode Nathaniel Hawthorne shows up in in Bungo Stray Dogs for more. I'm sorry, Al. For a while there, I thought we'd really found a way to get your body back. Give me the Philosopher's Stone! Rose. Oh god, with this bitch now. I don't understand though. If the stone was fake, how is he doing all that impossible stuff? Tell me what to do! I 
can't tell you that. Way to obliterate this woman's entire belief system and then offer her absolutely nothing in return. Still feel good about being all cool and snarky when you first met her, Ed? I knew we should have just incited a little rebellion. You. I'm hungry, last. Can I eat the old man, please? He's big and fat. What the hell are you? Obviously, I'm not talking about the woman. Who is this Play-Doh monster? What was it, bring your child to work day when the draft of this character design was due? No, that's out of the way. Who the hell are you? Obviously, I'm talking about the woman. This girl looks like Lady D slimmed down and started singing at jazz clubs. Now you two, everyone has mocked me. I won't stand for- <laughs> This girl might be Lady D. She's even got the nails. And you know what? Now that I think about it, Heisenberg's powers aren't that far off from alchemy. Shall all be punished? I see. You must be the bloodthirsty murderer who's been making a habit of targeting state alchemists lately. Well, I've never seen merch of this guy before, so I know he's fucked. <laughs> I hope he doesn't die though, this guy's sick. This guy is the cannon and chains alchemist. How is this not the protagonist? You know how much earlier I would have watched this show if it was called the cannon and chains alchemist? No, how? Now you perish. Yeah, saw that one coming. The show should think about getting this guy's face on a few Hot Topic t-shirts if they want me thinking he's gonna survive this encounter. The Sewing Life Alchemist, Shao Tucker. He's done some heavy research into chimera transmutation. I'll introduce you. Oh, nice. This guy looks reliable. This dude looks like a lion dressed for a job interview with the IRS. He looks like a sinister, hard-boiled egg. He looks like a 30-year-old Eustace from Courage the Cowardly Dog. Wait, you mean it talks? A chimera? Right. Supposedly. It only said one thing. I want to die. Yeah, that's probably fine. I'm sure that's like a... That was like a translation error, you know, from like... What it, what it used to be to, like, developing the ability to speak. Probably meant, like, I want to die eggs, you know? Maybe you want to die some eggs, because it was Easter. After that, it refused to eat until it got its wish. You know, and then it killed itself. <laughs> you okay, Ed? Oh, great dog. Humongous dog. He's probably fine. He's, he's probably not something... Needs to be worried about. Super does not sound like a dog though, right? Sounds like an owl trying to hoot through a tin can. Sounds like a car failing to start. <sighs> now that we're all settled in, let me say that it's a pleasure to meet you, Edward. As the Colonel told you, I'm the Sewing Life Alchemist, Shao Tucker. Everything about this man's appearance is a red flag. From the widow's peak to the half-shaven stubble, everything about this guy's appearance just screams, I am not taking my wife's death very well. If you want me to show you the tricks I've got up my sleeve, it's only fair you show me the tricks you've got up yours as well. It's the code we live by, equivalent exchange. Oh, great law of equivalent exchange themed burn. Score one for Tucker. I see. So that's what earned you the title Full Metal Alchemist. God, it always looks so cool. Does Edward not realize how sick he looks? Or is he brooding because it makes him look cooler? But why don't you go ahead and take a look at my laboratory? Oh nice, that's a three-headed nightmare. I wonder if one of those heads wants to die, but it keeps getting outvoted. They've got some ability to focus. I'm not sure they even know we're here anymore. Quite a catch, these two. A couple of prodigies. Let's turn them into animals. <laughs> Ow, what are you doing? You're supposed to be reading! Uh, Nina looked like she wanted to play. Well, in case you forgot, we didn't come here to play horsey. But what if you didn't have to play horsey, Edward? What if you could become an equestrian beast yourself? Imagine the speed. Imagine the grace, Edward. Imagine the hooves! <laughs> Why does Alexander have a duck bill? Are we sure this thing isn't already a chimera? It's only like 80% dog as far as I can tell. What are you up to down there, Ed? You know what? Let's just say I'm taking a break from a long day of research. After all that, you must be dog tired. <laughs> but how would you like to be a tired dog instead? I could make it so, Edward, if you would just let me. Daddy? What does assessment day mean? It means you are not going to like the rest of this episode, Nina. Or we'll be left with nothing. Again. Full Metal Alchemist.
full metal alchemist. Oh God, even the announcer knows. <sighs> My shoulders are killing me. Maybe you should try to move around some, brother. Yeah, not a bad idea, Al. Hey, you mangy mutt! <laughs> oh, Alexander's hyped! Me? Don't forget, assessment day is coming soon. Okay, but what if you did forget? Just this once, how about we just forget assessment day is coming soon? We were so poor in those days. My wife couldn't stand living that kind of life, so she left us. Oh, what? His wife left him? I thought she was dead. I guess it's probably more traumatizing to have your wife willingly leave your broke ass than to do it accidentally. Don't worry, Daddy, it's okay. If those people do tell you no, me and Alexander will growl at them until they say yes. Yeah, Nina, unfortunately, that's kind of the plan. You tell him, Nina. Hey, Nina, I've got an idea. Do you want to play with Daddy tomorrow? Really? Not really. He's goofing. Say it's a goof. Yes. I did it, boys. I finally did it. A chimera that understands human speech. So what do you think, Tom? Any thoughts? No, wait, don't answer yet. Hold on. Listen to me. That person over there, that's Edward. That person, Edward. Yes, that's very good. Well done. Thoughts, Tom? That person, Edward. That person, Edward. Word. God, him not getting it for such a long time is maybe the worst part of this. Like, the fact that he starts off like, Whoa, this thing talks! Oh, that's crazy! And it kind of sounds like... Nina? Big Brother Ed. Hey, guess what? Fuck its teeth. Fuck its big human chompers. Why would somebody draw that? That would be the last thing I ever drew before killing myself. I would realize that I made a horrible contribution to the world, and then I would remove myself from it. Mr. Tucker, when did you first get your state certification? Let's see. Oh god, wait, yep, now I remember. It was two years ago. And when did your wife leave you? That was two years ago, too. They were unrelated, but thanks for ruining my afternoon, I guess. I just have one more question for you. Nina and Alexander, where are they? I like how Al just looks up like, yeah, what? No way. I feel like a more realistic scenario would be Al being like, Ed, what does any of this have to do with... No. Yo! Figuring it out so quickly. The dog looks like your fucking kid, dude. It's like they fusion danced into one creature. The only thing you could have done to make it any more obvious would have been to be like, Ed, welcome. Meet my new dog. Uh, uh, Nina Xander. Shut up! <laughs> we are the same. We're the same. You're just like me. Oh, that was a great shot. How is this fight still going on, by the way? Waiting for Al to just walk over and slowly push his hand through his face. We're not! Oh, but yes we are! The opportunity was right in front of us and we took it! It's not too late, Ed! Think about it! I can transform you into any animal you'd like! You could go from Ed Word to Ed St. Bernard! Wouldn't that be wonderful? <laughs> if you keep this up, you'll die! Yeah, he'd die a lot sooner if you'd step in and help! Edward, you know... Daddy, do you hurt Daddy? <laughs> Nina, not helping. Not helping the situation, not helping me sleep tonight. Like hell, you're staying a state alchemist. Like hell. I like Ed standing over here like, You better lawyer up, Tucker, I'm coming for your ass. I know we're not gods. We're human. Only human! Yeah, it was a good call walking away from that Mustang. What an insane first couple of missions. We're in open waters from here on out. This is like, this was the big episode that I've seen. I have no idea what the rest of this fucking show is. Nina. Oh, nice, the crossover event of the century. Shao Tucker and a man here to kill him. The event everyone wants to transpire. <laughs> She'll be punished. 
That sucks, he just gets zapped to death. Fuck that, turn him into a moose or something. Daddy's hurting. Daddy hurts. No, daddy. Okay, cool, right. Definitely kill this poor monster already. Like, no, I'm not upset she's about to die. I wish she died before she turned into this thing. Her being the dog is the sad bit. So here's the thing. Like I'd said, uh, I have seen this episode before. But I've also heard that it's worse in the original. For Tom and anyone else who doesn't know, uh, Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood is a remake of Full Metal Alchemist. And so I hear uh, that the Nina arc is way sadder <laughs> in the original, and I haven't seen it yet. So I'm gonna go to the original, I'm gonna skim through, and we're gonna find out. Where are you going, big brother? Are you coming back? <laughs> oh my god, Nina, have you been hitting the scotch again? Where are you going, big brother? Are you coming back? She sounds like Sylvester Stallone got all of his teeth punched out of his mouth. I told you I'd let you see. It's a perfect version. A chimera that knows the human tongue. Oh my god, this is way different. This is way more ominous. And weren't my friend. Yeah, that's right. Edward, why does it hurt here? Oh! Oh my god, this is way worse! Wow, this is horrible! They changed so much in Brotherhood. That why does it hurt here line? Chilling. Also, in the original, Edward knows that it's Nina from the get-go, and seeing it now, I kind of like that better. It almost makes the scene scarier, because even though he knows it's Nina immediately, he doesn't have this, like, explosive dramatic reaction, like the music hasn't kicked in yet, he's still, like, quiet and just, like, in his feels about it, and so it kind of makes Shao Tucker seem more threatening, because Edward's just, like, just taking it in and, like, doesn't want to make any sudden moves because the situation is so fucked. I hate prodigies like you, Ed. Too damn perceptive. Dude, the dog looks like your drunk-ass daughter. All it takes is a person with eyes to perceive that. Why are you getting so upset, Edward? It's the nature of scientific progress. Animal testing, experimentation, trial and error. All advancements have... A price? Animal testing, experimentation, murdering your wife, all important aspects in the scientific process. Uh, uh, brother, you'll kill him! Oh, Jesus Christ. You don't know how! <laughs> the chimera's a perfect transmutation fused to the core. There's no way to separate them now. Careful, you'll just do to them what you did to your mother. Why would they cut all of this? This is so good. Is Full Metal Alchemist better than Brotherhood? Everyone told me to watch Brotherhood. Maybe Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood is the better version, but, but so far this episode is done way better in the original. You promised you'd come play with me. I know. Did you tell me to watch Brotherhood to like, save my feelings? This is so much worse. This is significantly more traumatizing than Brotherhood. Assaulting army personnel? What the hell's going on? Oh, whoa, crazy. Is that cannon and chains, Alchemist? Oh my god, wow, even the plot's really different. I'm not gonna let them turn her into a test subject. <laughs> That's super cool. Uh, this is such a crazy, different ending. I, I feel like Edward has a stronger emotional connection to Nina in this version. Or not even a stronger connection, but it just- I like that he, like, fights for her more here. He doesn't just beat up Tucker and then leave the scene. He, like, tries to split her, he chases after her when the alchemists take her. It just feels, like, a lot more impactful to his character and a lot deeper. <laughs> This is absolutely horrible. I hate seeing her just like exist as a dog. Like just this panting, constantly in pain fucking creature. <gasps> oh my god! <laughs> That's horrible! He turned her into a fucking Rorschach test! What do you guys see? I see trauma. This is definitely the best version of a Nina arc. Right? Like, without a doubt. Maybe Brotherhood, like, improves in the long run, 
But this is, like, without a doubt, the more disturbing version of this episode. It was more disturbing, it was more emotional, it was more impactful in my opinion. I like how much Edward wants to fight for Nina, not just by, like, beating up Tucker, but by trying to separate her. It shows that he hasn't learned from his first time of trying to play God. Like, he's still just as reckless and arrogant as he was when he tried to bring his mom back from the dead. Like, if Tucker didn't stop him, he would have fucked up Nina beyond recognition even more. This arc also just kind of feels like a side quest in Brotherhood, at least so far, because he, like, the Nina stuff happens, and he just goes and sits on the steps, and, like, and is upset about it. Oh no, I'm sorry, he, that's not all he does. And then he goes, WE'RE HUMAN! But he doesn't, like, I don't know, like, here he, like, beats up Tucker, he tries to split her, the alchemists come in, stop him, and then they're like, we're, we're gonna take Nina away and fuck with her a little more. And then he, like, chases after them, and then it isn't until he sees Nina die that he stops pursuing her. You know, I like that he doesn't just, like, leave it, leave it to the cops in this version. But anyway, that's just my opinion, as someone who's only seen one episode of the original now and not even the full episode. Uh, as always, let me know what you guys thought of this video in the comments below. Let me know your favorite jokes from this video as well. It helps me make short form content out of these episodes. And yeah, I hope you enjoyed probably our supersized episode of uh, Full Metal Alchemist. And I will see you guys next time. How's it going boys, girls, and squirrels? And welcome back to Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood, a show that I have still never seen the opening title sequence to. It just occurred to me, I'm five episodes in, don't even know what the theme song sounds like. Uh, so this time, we're, uh, we're, we're gonna watch that. Oh, she got hit with a gentle breeze! This opening? Go so hard. This is like one of the coolest anime openings I've ever seen. I'm not even being dramatic. Like, I love this cool little rap breakdown in the middle of it. I'm not gonna show any more of it for fear of copyright, but this whole thing is super hype. What do you have there, Ed? <laughs> it's a present. I transmuted it. Ed, this better not be another piece of my fucking floor. You did? You're your father's son, all right. <laughs> Lady, you gotta move on from your husband already. This mom is the only parent present in the family, and all of her lines are about the husband. You gotta become your own independent woman, lady. Quit letting yourself be defined by your husband. Why couldn't you make mommy better, Anne? <laughs> Big brother. <laughs> Let's play! <laughs> Oh my god, this is the worst nightmare anybody has had in the history of falling asleep. Brother, are you alright? You were dreaming. You want to know how I know this show has passion behind it? Because these animators knew that that small little moment needed a ton of animation. All Edward did just now was sigh and hug his leg. Realistically, you could get that done in like a handful of frames. But the animators gave that moment so much fluidity and animated so many frames of it because they knew how important that fluidity would be in properly conveying the emotions Edward was feeling. He goes from confused to relieved to sad to utterly defeated all within that moment there, and every second of each of those emotions was animated flawlessly. It just occurred to me that Edward wakes up every day and gives himself a French braid first thing in the morning. Or is Al the one braiding his hair? There's gotta be stickers out there of Al braiding Ed's hair, right? Like, that has to be the first piece of merchandise conceived from this show. God has given us a great trial, my children. Wicked heathens have spread insidious rumors trying to shake our faith. What the hell? Didn't this guy get eaten? Didn't this guy get eaten and cocoed? How does he still have so many followers? Yeah, father. Sorry to have to put you to all of this trouble. As soon as we have everything handled here, I have my own responsibilities I need to get back to. Oh, nice. Classic shapeshifter shenanigans going on here. Are lots of people gonna die again? Yes, they will. Who can I eat all of them after they die? No, you may not. This guy needs like five more lines added to his character design. Like some forehead wrinkles or some lips. Something. Anything other than this Play-Doh pumpkin look he's got going on here. He looks like Bone. He looks like Bone from the Bone comics. Anybody remember Bone? Am I dating myself here? 
Anybody have every volume of Bone in their scholastic library? By the way, Envy, could you lose the old man costume? It's rather unattractive. Come on, I was just staying in character. What are you two fucking? This time around, I'll go with the younger, cuter model. What do you say? <laughs> oh, never mind. Fuck away. You guys make a great couple. If you put this guy in the exact same outfit, but color it all blue, he would make a great looking water type gym leader. We can't very well let him die. He's an important sacrifice. Ugh, that was so yummy! We'll find some way of handling the situation. Am I the only one who finds gluttony, like, fucking terrifying? The fact that he's, like, just a guy makes him so much more disturbing than if he was, like, a big monster or something. Like, he's just a dude eating people. Imagine how brutal and grisly it would be to get eaten by another human. Nobody will blame you. Please, I'm asking as your friend. You and Tucker are the only state alchemist of note in this area, right? <laughs> Oh no. I like how the alchemists are constantly forgetting about Ed and Al. Like, they're never in the loop on anything. They just get sent on missions, and then when they come back, the alchemists are like, Oh yeah, that's right, you guys, uh... Alright, here's another mission. Now here I am again, trying desperately to figure out a way to do the impossible. <laughs> I'm such a hopeless idiot. Yeah, you see, this would've hit so much harder if Brotherhood kept the moment from the original where Ed was, like, about to attempt to split them up. Without a body, I can't feel the rain hitting my face. That's something I miss all the time. All the time? All right, Al sufficiently bummed me out about not having a body. Good job. It's sad boy hour for the Elric brothers right now, huh? I like how Ed's like, every drop of rain that hits my skin is more depressing than the last. And Al just comes in like, you want to talk about having skin, Ed? Who is this guy? What does he want? Everybody's always shocked when this guy comes busting out of their concrete prison, but like, doesn't that just imply that he's as strong as the alchemist who made it? Like, if you make a concrete prison with alchemy, and then a guy breaks out of that concrete prison, assumedly it takes about as much alchemical energy to do both of those actions. I just don't understand the power scaling in this world. I do like that Ed and Al are meeting Scar this early though. Like I love, I love introducing this alchemist Terminator into the mix. Who are you anyway? Why are you after us? As long as there are creators like you in the world, there must also be destroyers. Ugh, one of these guys, huh? I hate characters who are like, I am evil because you are good. There must always be a balance between good and evil. Like, shut up. No, there doesn't. Just stop committing crime. Things can be just good. Balance is good. Balance doesn't mean a bunch of chaos mixed with a bunch of peace. Too slow. Oh, Jesus Christ, we'll alchemist him back! I like how there's this, like, mesh or, like, net inside of Al. That's a cool, weird little detail. I'm not gonna leave you behind, Al! You press your hands together to make a ring, and then you perform transmutation. Now I see. Okay, you may see, but I'm gonna need, like, three more sentences worth of explanation, please. What do you mean he claps his hands together to make a ring? What does that mean? I don't understand the correlation between clapping your hands and drawing a chalk circle. Then I will have to start by destroying this abhorrent right arm of yours. God, this dude's over here attacking their gimmicks. It's like he's retconning them to death. Alchemists alter things from their natural form, perverting them to something else, something grotesque. They profane God, the true creator of all things. I didn't realize how much religious themes would be in this show, but they're like, most of the themes of the show. This is truly an auspicious day. So you know who I am and you still want to challenge me. Bad decision. <laughs> nice, great fake it till you make it energy, Mustang. Yeah, didn't his lieutenant say Mustang was useless when it's raining? H how do you forget that? If I was an alchemist police who became useless when it rained, I would become a double major in criminal justice and weather forecasting. We'll see how you fare against the strong arm alchemist, Alex Luis Armstrong! Yet another state alchemist. God is putting them in my path for me. You sure it's God attracting all of the police to you and not all of your, uh, you know, killing police? <laughs> sick! 
What an awesome and complicated form of alchemy. That was sweet. He uses punches to transform objects. What an annoying extra step. What do you mean? Destruction and creation are two sides of the same coin. You must destroy to create. That is the law of the universe. Oh god, Armstrong's one of these types too. Maybe him and Scar should just talk things over. They've clearly got a lot in common. Non-alchemists may fail to see the inherent truth of that statement, but we understand, don't we, Scar? So this killer is an alchemist too. What? Yeah, he's an alchemist? What, did you think he was just your run-of-the-mill god of lightning? Are there non-alchemists with superpowers in this world? Like, what else could he be? You're not getting away. <laughs> Uh, sir? I know, he got away! Oh, great! And now my arms come off because my brother's a big, fat idiot! That was a perfect reaction from Al. God, fucking look what you did, Ed! <laughs> We're really falling apart, aren't we, brother? We? You're talking to me about falling apart right now? Hey, I'm falling apart too, Al. Just look at my arm. Look at my everything! Whoa, hardcore montage. I also love the collection of characters that were in that. Like the Chains and Cannons Alchemist, Mustang, and then, assumedly, one of the antagonists. I think, I think the guy in the prison cell that we saw once before? Like, what a cool way to squeeze a ton of intrigue out of this flashback. Because you've got so many layers, it's like, okay, if that's the guy in the prison, he very much looks like, um, like, Greed and, um, what, what's the name, uh, Gluttony. Like, he looks like that crew. So you've got that layer of intrigue, coupled with the fact that he's there with Mustang. So that's a whole extra layer. Very cool. I, I like this, I like this flashback sequence. Before we can make any headway on getting your body back, we have to get my arm back to normal. Oh yeah, sure. Let's start with your body. Let's always start with your body. Ah, uh, come on, Al. It's not like your body's going anywhere. Yeah, or coming back anytime soon. The Major's here to help. Just try to grin and bear it. Children can be so stubborn. Hey, shut up! I'm no child! You're really gonna try and convince this guy that you aren't a child? Everyone's a child compared to Armstrong. This dude's about as man as you can get. Armstrong is the gold standard of what a man can be. You know those examples of guys lifting weights on the- on the machines at the gym? That's Armstrong! I thought he might get lonely with that little My company. My brother isn't some kind of farm animal! I feel like Al would love riding with the sheep. It seems like an upgrade to me. <laughs> Dr. Marco! Dr. Marco, that is you, isn't it? This Dr. Marco guy must be some kind of big deal if he made Armstrong grow a whole ass mouth. It's me, Alex Louise Armstrong from Central. <coughs> Friend of yours? Armstrong must be some kind of monster if he made this guy break into a whole ass sprint. Excuse me, but do you know who this person is by any chance? Oh, Major, you can really draw. The art of portraiture has been passed down to the Armstrong family for generations. What a cute moment. I like Ed complimenting Armstrong, and Armstrong being like, Nah, shucks. So you're here to silence me then? No, nothing like that. I won't be tricked by you. <clears throat> I'll ask you one more time, please calm down! Dead. Murdered. Say, what's inside your box of the- OH, IT'S PAIN! So, you changed your name and decided to live in hiding way out here in the countryside. Al, get out of the box. What are you doing? Just because you look like cargo doesn't mean you have to act like it. I know that his leg is busted, but like, I don't know, put him in a seat or something. Get him a chair, prop him up. This can't be good for his self-esteem. How can that be the stone? It's a liquid. Oh, that's rad. I don't know why, but a liquid stone is a really cool idea to me. It's just like the stone that false priest had in Lior. It was incomplete, but it still amplified his powers considerably. I don't understand why people are calling it the Philosopher's Stone if there are multiple stones. Or are these like recreations of the Philosopher's Stone? When I hear Philosopher's Stone, I'm assuming we're talking about one rock, right? Am I the only one who thinks that way? Like, Philosopher's Stone doesn't sound like a breed of rock. It sounds like a singular stone. But still. But still, 
We don't want it so badly that we'd be willing to deprive this town of their only doctor to get it. Cargo doesn't get an opinion, Al. You can either be in the box or be in the conversation. You can't do both. Yeah, a lot has happened. Can you fix us up? This is Major Alex Louis Armstrong. Oh, check out RoboDog. That's a good boy. That's a great boy. Am I allowed to say that about this one without fear of him being stuffed into the DNA of a child? But you better believe you're gonna pay a fortune in rush order fees. <laughs> Damn, Chris Evans ain't got shit on Armstrong. Who remembers that wood chopping scene from Age of Ultron? Feel like that scene would have been 10 times more intimidating if Captain America punched the wood apart in front of Iron Man. Looks like it's about time for me to get supper started. You look like you could eat a lot, but don't worry, there's plenty. Oh no, please don't trouble yourself on my account. Armstrong, who are you trying to fool here? Don't act like that body doesn't take five meals a day to maintain, you fucking mammoth. Don't act like you're not fucking riding your glycemic index every waking second. Armstrong's on a strict diet of anything he fucking looks at. We, we call that the gluttony diet. What determination to burn down your own house to make sure there was no retreat. Come, Edward, allow me to hope for you this comforting embrace. Why do you gotta make things weird, Armstrong? He's like the sweetest guy ever. And then he starts stripping. <laughs> That's gonna be on his tombstone. He was the sweetest man ever. And then he started stripping. They said it would take three days, right? So, give him three days. Yo, this dog has got to join the crew. Put a turret on its back or something. He's already a cyborg. He'll make a great addition. Yeah, it feels good. I increased the percentage of chrome this time, so it should be less prone to rusting. The trade-off is that it's not quite as strong, so don't try anything crazy. Why would you do that? His arm didn't rust off, it was destroyed. It was destroyed doing something crazy. You fixed a problem that didn't exist and made him more prone to the problem he came here for. Whatever. I guess that's in line with her being a mechanic. There you go. You're good as new. I'm surprised Ed doesn't give him, like, a detractable blade or, like, a cannon arm or something. You know? Like, he can shape the armor into anything he wants. I'm surprised it doesn't just make Al a fucking tank. And that was episodes five and six of Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. These are some, like, set-up-y, lore-y episodes, it seems. Not a ton of action going on. I mean, there was action, but this seemed more to be, like, we got some Philosopher's Stone lore. Um, and we also got to go back to Winry and Grandma. It was, it was very much like, you know, the first four episodes are like tossing you into the world, getting you like introduced very fast. And then now we're kind of like pumping the brakes and easing into the world. Um, but I love the characters, so that doesn't really bother me. I heard, I heard the original show had a bunch of filler. And like, and a lot of people think this moves at a breakneck speed. And I will say, even though I'm very against filler, these are some characters I can watch dick around through some like non-canon episodes. Like, e yeah, even when it's not like the craziest episodes I've seen, I love Al, Al's great, Ed, Ed's super funny. Um, they're just a great duo. Just a great duo and a great like well-written brother hood ship pair of brothers but those are my uh humble opinions on the show let me know in the comments what you thought of this video these two episodes and let me know what your favorite jokes from the video were as well it helps me make tiktoks youtube shorts all that stuff and i will see you next time how's it going boys girls and squirrels welcome to a bad hair day relax let's not make a big deal out of this we all have them you think i like looking like this you think i want to look like i'm about a shotgun a budweiser at my father-in-law's barbecue it's not easy looking at yourself every day on camera watching yourself age before your eyes <sighs> anyway who's who's excited for full metal alchemist gluttony I smell him. I can smell him. The scar-faced is fallen. He's close. I can taste his stink. How is Gluttony both the scariest and doofiest character in the entire show? I can't tell if there's an equal ratio of scary to doofy, or if the attributes correlate to one another, but I've got some people running the numbers. I'll get back to you when I have them crunched. <laughs> Yep, the
the numbers are in. The doofiness definitely adds to the scary factor. God, I did not expect for the payoff of that joke to come so quickly. You know, sometimes, sometimes me and the show are just completely in sync. <laughs> Oh my god, him screaming about losing an arm definitely didn't help things either. I want his body found. Don't take so much as a coffee break until that's done, do you understand? Come on, Colonel, can't you cut us some slack? At this rate, you're gonna work us all to death. Definitely investigate the guy trying to get you to ease up on the investigation. Come on, Colonel, it's a serial killer. We'll catch him eventually, ease up. Give us a week off, come on, we've earned it. Oh, relax, I'm joking. Jesus, who died? Major Armstrong. <laughs> Oh, Second Lieutenant Ross and Sergeant Brosh, to what do we owe this pleasure? Ah, Ross and Brosh. I see you're filling in for Officers Kosh and Slosh. Sounds like Armstrong made those names up on the spot. Or the mangaka did. Yeah, I'll be there in a sec, I just gotta finish up this chapter. Alright, and then Armstrong says, Ah, oh, Edward! Allow me to introduce you to Officers, uh, Schmoop and Droop. Alright, cool, done. Coming. Although, if you don't mind me asking, why are you wearing a suit of armor? <laughs> It's a hobby. A hobby? What kind of freaky hobby is that, Lieutenant? Just say it's because you fight superhuman freaks who are constantly trying to kill you. Well, would you rather he wear a leather crop top like you? You guys are the freaks. The word itself is so beautiful. I've loved books my whole entire life, ever since I first learned to read as a girl. A job was heaven. <laughs> you, guys, you guys can't make Al take up half of the screen if you aren't gonna draw him with any detail. Half of that entire frame was just a gray blob. So they fired me! If I don't find another job, I'll never be able to move my poor elderly mother into a better hospital! Oh god, is there gonna be a twist where it turns out she fused her sick mother with a book or something? People do crazy things when they get kicked out of their professions in this world. I'm keeping my eye on this chick. <laughs> Excuse me, there was one thing we wanted to ask you. Yes! Do you remember seeing any research belonging to someone named Tim Marco? Yo, she's kind of bad though, isn't she? Little bookworm cutie all turtlenecked up? Man, forget about it. I'd like to worm my way between her pages. <laughs> I said I'd like to worm my way- It'll take a while, but I could write them out for you. Thank you, bookworm! <laughs> You're my hero! You're welcome. God, they fucking stripped Al's animation budget. He's looked like a sheet ghost this entire episode. Before anyone gets in a tizzy, I'm not criticizing it. I know they do this in the manga too. I'm just saying, Al has looked like a piece of abstract art this whole episode. More so than any other. Here you are, complete copies of all Tim Marco's notes. <sighs> Dude, I'm gonna go to my local library and start acting up if she doesn't stop being such a cutie. I'm gonna cause some fucking trouble at the information desk if these animators don't start behaving themselves. Oh great, does this mean we came all this way for a cookbook? Miss, which part of this made you think it was an important document? Is it not what you're looking for? Miss, what made you think we'd want to read any of these dumbass notes? Oh, I almost forgot Jessica's fee. Lieutenant, here. This is my registration number and the pocket watch for ID. Yo, Cheska, more like Fresca, dude. This bitch is cold. I would do literally anything for a kiss on the cheek from Cheska. Also, I'm sure this is illegal, but what's stopping an alchemist from just slapping his hands together and like creating money? Like how do you even regulate that? These are designed to look like recipes to the average person, but they're actually advanced alchemical notes. Only the alchemist who originally wrote them can understand. I want to see Ed make like 70 accidental practice cakes while he tries to decipher what this cookbook is actually trying to teach him. I don't understand. Why does this one make a bomb, but this one makes a strawberry shortcake? Al, there's a section in here on green tea. Green tea? Are you thinking what I am? Uh-huh. It might be a reference to the green lion of metallurgic alchemy. Yeah, no, lion. Good. No, that, that was totally what I was thinking. Um... So this is, uh, completely unrelated, but, uh, can we stop for Boba after this? Great! We've got a place to start. Let's do this! Full Metal Alchemist. Full Metal Alchemist. Am I the only one whose heart clenches waiting to hear what tone the announcer is gonna say the title in each episode? I was waiting for him to be like, Full Metal Alchemist! And then they cut back and everyone in the library's been killed. I think I've got exactly the person you guys are looking for. Well, I have read the military's criminal case records and I do remember them all. That's all I needed to hear, lady. You're hired. Yo, let's go employ her ass! Please make this girl a reoccurring character. If not in the show, at least in my dreams. <laughs> 
In that case, a certain someone should hurry and get back to work, or you're gonna have to come up with a new motivational phrase. Oh, let's give it up for some left-handed representation. As a fellow leftist, I finally feel seen. That's what leftist means, right? In order to manufacture even a single stone, you have to make multiple human sacrifices. How could the military authorize research into something so horrible? Nice, buddy. Really earning that government paycheck. Brother, you should really get something to eat. No, thanks. Pretty awful, huh? Hmm. So good. So well done. Such natural acting and pacing. Such great brother writing. I love, I just loved that, like, I don't know. I like the beat in between him being like, you should get some sleep. And then Ed, like, finally saying, like, what's on their mind. But saying it in a way that's like... I don't know, it's like a nice ease into the discussion. Like, instead of being like, so what are we gonna do now? He's just like, it's, uh, it's pretty rough what we learned today, huh? You know? That's great. That's really good. I'd love to see a scene where they have to debate whether or not it'd be okay to use a Philosopher's Stone that's already made. Like, a Philosopher's Stone requires human sacrifices to make. But if one's already made and they use it for good, would that technically make its use ethical? Like, it's already made, so not using it would be wasting those human lives, right? But then would using it be condoning its creation and then encouraging more sacrifices? I'm not necessarily taking a stance one way or another, but that's the kind of discussion that I would be excited to see, especially considering that it's coming from two, like, desperate teenagers. So it's a good opportunity to, like, make them a little more flawed, because you couldn't entirely, like, blame them for siding one way or the either. Turns out the truth is too dangerous to hold. <laughs> I'm starting to think this is God's special way of torturing people who've committed taboos. I'm gonna torture you if you don't stop calling them taboos. But I guess I've been too afraid to say it. What? I... I'm furious. I wanted to hear what he had to say so badly. You said it needed live humans. Ugh. There'd be plenty of condemned criminals in the prison. Officially, they'd be recorded as executed. Honestly, if you're gonna execute someone, all I'm saying is if you're gonna execute someone anyway, why waste the soul? Why waste the soul? That's all I'm saying. I wonder if the government is involved. Why do I have the feeling that we're getting involved in something really dangerous here? That's why we told you to pretend like you'd never heard anything! I like seeing these extras become self-aware of their expendability. We weren't! We weren't! We promise! Yeah, sure we weren't. I could watch Al do his sneaky little run for hours. I feel like it's missing a few sound effects, though. I don't care how quiet he's trying to be. I bet Al running sounds like a freight train caught in a tornado. Whether I'm fine on my own or not isn't the issue. You're too big to get through here. <laughs> it's not like I asked to get this big. You crawl back right now, and you fucking apologize. I'm lucky I've got a small body. Oh, and here I thought he was learning to accept his shortcomings. Pun obviously intended. <gasps> yeah! Whoa, that was a sick design. That is a classic Adult Swim anime design if I've ever seen one. I'm sure that's not like relatable to anybody, but for some reason, that design of that dude that just jumped down on Al is like the epitome of what Adult Swim anime used to look like when I was growing up. Like Bleach, Naruto, Inuyasha, like that guy's design looked like it would fit in any of those anime. But not necessarily like Demon Slayer or My Hero or anything, you know what I mean? Like I feel like you could put this guy in like a Naruto movie, no one would bat an eye. I'm number 66. Well. That's the name they gave me when I came to work here, anyway. I'm going to cut you up nice and neat. God, this guy looks so fucking sick. Imagine hiring a guy that looks like this. For any job. I don't even care if you're hiring him for an assassin position. I'd be so afraid of this guy, i just spend every night being like... I should give him a raise. What is all this? 
I bet this is what they used to transmute a Philosopher's Stone. Yes. That's right. Great stealth, Ed. Really bang up job there. Nobody ever teach you to talk inside of your fucking head? Is this what failing a stealth check in D&D &D looks like? All right, I'm gonna sneak in and try and find the loot, okay? I rolled a three. All right, your character sneaks in through the castle window and says out loud, I'm going to sneak in and find the loot. You are immediately assailed by guards. Yeah, that checks out. I'm just good like that. Who are you, pal? The one in charge of guarding this place from curious brats. For the moment, let's just say my name is number 48. Are these guys also possessing armor? Is that what the red eyes signify? Also, the fucking armor design going on in 1912 Germany was fucking banging. If the Germans were rolling up to World War I wearing this armor, done. Finished war. No cliffhanger, no sequel. It would have been a Netflix limited series kind of war. A prosthetic arm, huh? No matter. My sword can pierce steel as well as flesh. Gonna go ahead and call bullshit on that, considering his steel hand just deflected your sword. I'm gonna go out on a limb here and say you're hollow inside. You're a perceptive one. I could tell from the sound. I spar against someone like you all the time. Oh, called it. Where's everyone getting this sweet ass armor from? Also, <laughs> where'd this dude get a katana? At least give him a Zwiehinder or something if we're gonna pretend this takes place in Germany. Back when I still had a living body, I was better known as Slicer. I was a mass murderer, you see. I love how this guy introduces himself as a mass murderer. Not a mercenary or an assassin or anything, just a... Just a guy who did what he loved and loved what he did. So, you're the gentleman who's gonna be taking my daughter out this evening. Yes, that's right. My name is Slicer and I'm a mass murderer. Oh. <laughs> How interesting. I, re I respect your, uh, I respect your forwardness. Did you hear what I said? My dear little Alicia is about to turn three. Cool them cheeks, you're in the office. Do you think this could wait? I'm at work. Oh, what a coincidence. I'm at work too. She's the cutest little thing. I said cool them. I'm sure she's adorable, but stop calling me to gush over your daughter. And on a military line too. I like how Maze just calls his boss to gush about his daughter. What a goober. What a textbook definition of a goober. Like, I feel like if I just called my friends to tell them about how cute my girlfriend is, I would cease having friends. Hey, it's Danny, uh, just calling to remind you that my girlfriend is an absolute cutie patootie with a rump that don't quit. Um, it's been six weeks since you stopped returning my calls, so, uh, so, you know, hit, hit me back. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, Okay. I thought it was suspiciously quiet in here. <laughs> Major Armstrong's gonna take his shirt off again and yell at us some more, isn't he? There should not be this many people afraid of Armstrong's nudity. Especially this many co-workers. I increased the percentage of chrome, so it's less prone to rusting, but it's not as strong, so don't try anything crazy. What did she think he used this arm for? Tame activities? The regular arms for grabbing things? The robot arms for doing things crazy! In that case, I don't need to worry. You see, we've been sparring partners a long time, and I've still never beaten him. Oh, that's hype! What a sick reveal that Al is stronger than Ed. Obviously, he's physically stronger, but this is the first time that they've established that Al is, like, the better fighter of the two. Would you like to hear? It's a pretty good yarn. You probably already know it, though. It all starts with a man by the name of Barry. Oh, okay, here comes this guy's whole life story. Can't wait to learn the entire lore of this character who definitely won't show up again after this episode. Yes, that's right! He's standing in front of your very eyes! I am the infamous serial killer, Barry the Chopper! Oh, what the fuck? Come on! That's so on purpose, right? Barry the Chopper? What, are they fucking with me? Shouldn't you be going, ah, or what happened to your body, or something? Ah, what happened to your body, freak? Hey, now that's impolite. Great bit. Phenomenal bit. Why is Al the comedic backbone of the entire series? Are you sure that you're not a puppet created and controlled by your so-called brother? Huh? Were you ever even a real person to begin with? How can you ask something like that? Oh my god, what? What the fuck? Why would they do this? What a crazy strategy. This guy was losing the fight, so he decided to give Al an existential crisis instead. Silly boy. You were never alive to begin with. It's as simple as that. 
Then how do you know that you were really alive? I was, trust me. I like how this guy doesn't even have to explain himself to freak Al out. Because Al is just like a 12 year old boy. Like he gave no evidence of this crazy theory, but it doesn't matter because Al's already rattled. Like the fact that Al is just a kid makes him so much more susceptible to just buying this shit without any proper evidence. I also like that they establish that this guy couldn't beat Al in a fight. So instead he has to like get in his head. This area is off limits, don't move. <laughs> hey buddy. Next time you see two robot monsters duking it out in a restricted area, just go ahead and open fire. Go out! Do it now! What? God, I love that strategy. They did this exact same thing in Buddy Daddies, and it's always hype. I forgot to mention something about this mass murderer, Slicer. His crimes were really done by a pair of brothers. An independent head and body? Yo! Oh, that's so sick! Die! Oh. It's crazy that it took fighting Scar to teach Ed that you can destroy things by just stopping alchemy halfway through the process. That just seems so immediately obvious. Like, it's weird that it's Scar's whole gimmick. Quit, you pathetic blubbering, you idiot! You are trying to kill one of our most important sacrifices. Do you understand me? Oh, that's so sick. I like that damaging the seal hurts them, but only breaking it kills them. <laughs> Technical difficulties. Ah! Lucky me! <laughs> Yo, this show's actually pretty funny. The comedy's pretty good. I did not expect this show to be as funny as it is. You know, Al? something I've been wanting to tell you for a while, but I guess I've been too afraid to say it. What was Ed about to tell me? God damn it. Oh no, he's in Al's head so deep. What? Stay right there, or the next one puts a hole in your head. This isn't going quite as I planned. This is just... Man, this is just not my day. Brother! His life's not in danger, but he has lost a lot of blood, so you might want to get him to a hospital as soon as you can. Well, that's... weirdly considerate. If they need him alive, why wouldn't they just capture him? Like, they keep saying that they need Ed as the sacrifice. Seems strange to let him scamper about without their supervision. But anyway, that is episodes 7 and 8 of Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. Still good. You know, obviously still good. It's interesting that more armor people have gotten introduced. I'm interested, I'm very interested in like the lore of this armor. Cause like I said, like, wh like what is this for? People find it weird that Al wears it and it hasn't shown up in like any of the flashbacks of the Ishvalan war. Like, is it like truly medieval armor? Because it seems like, I mean, it seems heavy as hell. So maybe that's why nobody uses it, but it's pretty rad armor. Um, hopefully they explore a little more about that, and it's not just, like, some cool shit for the sake of whatever. But anyway, as always, let me know what you thought of this video in the comments below. Let me know what you thought of these episodes as well, and let me know what your favorite jokes from the video were in the comments down below. It helps me make TikTok, shorts, all that. And I will see you all next time. How's it going, boys, girls, and squirrels? And welcome to the show that not only lives up to the hype, but it is the hype. I think I said something like this in the last episode, but Full Metal Alchemist is one of those shows where even when the plot isn't doing anything crazy in a particular episode, I am still just more than happy to check in on these characters that I have grown to love. And I can't say that about every show. Like, I love Naruto, love the characters in it, there are for sure some boring episodes. Bungo Stray Dogs, I have a ton of fun with that show, but when the plot isn't kicking itself into high gear, I am bored as hell. Full Metal Alchemist feels like One Piece to me right now, where even if I'm not watching a particularly eventful episode, it still feels worth it just to check in on some friends. All that build up to say that I'm excited to see what Ed and Al are getting up to in this episode. Full Metal Alchemist, sir! Huh? We do apologize in advance for this! Huh? <laughs> Jesus, he got the full wind-up in that one. I don't think your advanced apology covered that. I saw the wind resistance on that slap.
You don't have to do everything all on your own, you know. You can lean on other people. Like us. What are your names again? I'm sorry, I did not learn your names. I really didn't expect you two to be hanging around this long. They have the most expendable designs I've ever seen. I mean, this one's just Colonel Mustang with tits and a mole. My punishment? For slapping you? Huh? Nothing, I had it coming. <laughs> What's got you two so scared of me? I love how scared they were. Oh my god, thank you so much. Oh, I'm gonna throw up. I was the one who did the slapping. <laughs> I almost forgot. I have an even less pleasant lecture in store for me today. Oh, gross. What is that, his idea hair? Don't show me Ed's antennae doing its business. I don't want to see that shit. I don't want to see Ed's little hair strand getting erect when he gets an idea. Uh, I was in a really rough fight. You did it again, moron! How could you treat my precious auto man like that? Alchemy Does Winry not know what Ed's job is? Build him an arm for fighting. This is like giving somebody a prosthetic eye and being like, All right, good as new. Now I've designed this one to fall out of your skull if you open your eyelids, so don't be doing any of that now. Aw, <sighs> uh, was that your girlfriend? My girlfriend, no way! It's nothing to be embarrassed about. When I was your age, I had a different girlfriend every week. Oh, all right, Lieutenant, I see you. Don't worry about it, Ed. When I was your age, I pulled. I mean, I fucking pulled. I would fall asleep between a pair of tits in Berlin and wake up between a pair in Brussels. All right, I was a menace. Hey, hey, Al. Brother. You know you can come to the room, right? This is absolutely not the direction I expected Al's character to take. Honestly, I probably should have seen it coming, but this is way heavier than what I was prepared for. <laughs> oh, that's unfortunate. Kid, get the fuck out of here. This is the last thing Al's crisis needs right now. You know what, though? Can alchemists, like, even create life? Like, no, right? Like, Al's whole thing is that he's afraid that he's, like, a construct that Ed created. But there's no, like, uh, precedence of that happening. I like how the butcher dude put new fake lore into Al's head. Ed said to look near the west exit, there'd be someone familiar there who I'd recognize right away. Uh oh my god, how tall is Major Armstrong? Alright, well, fucking, how tall is that? Armstrong is six foot nine? And now you're badly injured. Uh, it, it's not your fault. You can't blame yourself for this. I blame her for this. Your arm stopped working mid-fight. You didn't drink your milk. <clears throat> Why should I? I hate it. You're going to be small and stunted forever if you keep using that stupid excuse! Is there like a one short joke per episode quota they're trying to meet here? No wonder Ed's so self-conscious, his world is ruthless to short people. What is the milk industry funding this show? We got Big Milk pushing its propaganda through Full Metal Alchemist? Shut up! I don't have to drink it if I don't wanna! Oh, Armstrong's a milk drinker if I've ever seen one. That dude bleeds milk. This guy's practically lactating. Sure, no problem. Yo, Ed, my boy! Is it true you brought a pretty blonde girl into your room to service you? What are you, dressed for a night on the town? When did this dude become a big Hollywood director? This dude looks ready to snort Adderall in the bathroom of a nightclub. Come on, no need for that. Why don't you spend the night at my place? Really? Yes, of course. My wife and daughter will be delighted to have you. Definitely don't spend the night at Michael Bay's place. I don't care if he has a wife and daughter. This guy's dressed like the shadiest dude you could ever meet. Winry's gonna end up so far at the bottom of a pyramid scheme, people are gonna think her corpse was a pharaoh. <laughs> Full Metal Alchemist. Full Metal Alchemist. I like that the announcer is always up to date with whatever's happening in the show. I thought they recorded like two versions of his lines. I didn't know every episode had a unique transition. But there are some things that I actually need to be told. <laughs> Just what am I gonna do with you? Give her a place to stay and nothing else. That is all you are required and expected to do. Listen up, boys. You try anything with my daughter, and you will answer to me. Winry, get out of this house! That was a crazy joke! 
That was a psychotic move on Hughes' part. You know how many hate comments I would get if I tried to pull that joke? Oh, I get it. When Full Metal Alchemist pulls out a gun for a joke, it's the best anime of all time. But when I do it, I'm promoting gun violence in America. You've got such a big body now. It's not like I asked for this body, brother! Is this show just gonna end with everybody learning a lesson in body positivity? Because I think they could all use it right now. Maybe you wanted to say that my soul and my memories are really artificial constructions you created! This is all super sad and tense, but from Ed's perspective, Al must seem like an irrational partner who just brings up problems you didn't know you had in your relationship. Like, all of this is coming out of nowhere for Ed. So were you ever going to tell me you were cheating on me? What are you talking about? I'm not cheating on you. Then who the fuck did I dream about you sleeping with last night, Michael? Or is there more you wanted to say? Okay. Oh, I love how Ed just, like, swallows his rage and calmly walks away. Assumedly, because he respects Al's concerns and wants to cool off before continuing the discussion. Like, what a great big brother move on his part. What a- what a great show of restraint here. Al, you- Where did that come from? Everybody's still super confused about where your emotional crisis just came from. He can't eat anymore, he can't sleep, he can't feel cold or warmth. He's my little brother and I'm supposed to protect him and I did this. <laughs> oh my god, that was horrendous. Just ask him and I'm sure you'll see. No, I'm, I'm too afraid. I'm too scared of what he'll say. Oh my god, this is horrendous. Oh no, that was unyieldingly sad. It's brutal that Ed's biggest insecurity is that Al would blame him for losing his body, and now Al has kind of accidentally proven him right. I don't remember that one. I won the fight, but she shot me down. Oh, did she? Okay, definitely don't end the conversation like that if the plan is to make up. You're telling me that all those memories are lies? Sorry. Oh, oh, Al's delivery. <laughs> My right arm, did I lose it or is it still with me? Yeah, it's still there, mister. It should be fine. Terrifying question to ask. That's one of those questions where if you have to ask, odds are you're not gonna like the answer. The power of one man doesn't amount to much. I do love how varied all the locations in this show are. Like, I feel like we're getting to see a lot of really cool settings I don't normally see in anime. Ishvala is kind of a dumb name, but at least they didn't call it Afghanishman or something. And in turn, they'll protect the ones they love. It seems like the least we tiny humans can do for each other. Sounds like a pyramid scheme. Speaking of which, how would you like to set your own hours and make $10,000 a week? I can get you 10 junk cars by this afternoon, each worth 10,000 grand once you spruce them up a little. Come on, Mustang, selling cars is in your name, you'll be a natural. I can't believe they gave this guy a line about pyramid schemes. You see what I mean about me and the show being in sync? I still need to organize and pack up all of my paperwork before we transfer to Central. I haven't had much time for sleep. It looked like you were in the middle of a pretty vivid dream there. I mean, I've been standing here watching you sleep for the past, oh, I don't know, 13 hours? Sorry to interrupt. <laughs> <laughs> Sir Bradley, Your Excellency. I know he's just here to say hi, but I really want to see Fuhrer Bradley fuck some shit up right now. It's not my fault. This show has conditioned me to expect cool shit whenever he shows up. This young man. Oh, you're injured. I thought a nice melon might cheer you up. I guess. Yes, thank you, sir! No, you're good, Ed. You had it right the first time. I guess was totally the proper response there. I heard you were injured, so I brought you this full, unopened honeydew melon. You're... Looking at me as though I've done something odd. Tell me what you know about the Philosopher's Stone. And I hope for your sake that you don't know too much. Fuhrer Bradley did not disappoint. We got German Tom Selleck over here using a cantaloupe and a low growl to intimidate Ed. I could not have asked for a better outcome. <laughs> I'm only kidding. There's no reason for you to be so uptight. 
Al was not having it with that joke. Dude is out of commission right now. Look at Al, he's reeling from that joke. At this time, suspicion is our strongest line of offense, and our only form of defense is discretion. Do not trust anyone. Definitely wasn't a good idea to start this conversation with a super threatening joke then. Well, with the way things have gone lately, Al and I decided we should go back and visit our old teacher. I think I'm too scared, brother. Jesus, what does she teach him? Fear? She'll make you a fine wife someday. Don't start that again! <laughs> I would rather talk about my wife anyway. <laughs> This poor guy just wants a friend to gush about his wife to. Oh, and tell the boys I said goodbye. Thanks, Mr. Hughes. I really appreciate your hospitality. I feel like the animation budget is being allocated strangely in this show. The animators just went absolutely fucking nuts on Winry's ponytail just then. Well, there are a couple of reasons. For starters, I'm a little tired of getting my ass kicked. Wait, is this some kind of combat teacher? Oh, I'm so hyped to meet Ed and Al's combat teacher. I always just assumed they trained with one another. It never occurred to me that they had like a full-on sensei. How could this even happen? And who could have orchestrated something as terrible as this? I've got to tell the Fuhrer right away. <laughs> oh, let's go. Are we going to see this dude fight? If his fighting is sick, it'll completely make up for the weird Vegas-loving alter ego he has. Hello, Lieutenant Colonel. It's nice to meet you. Well, actually, hello really isn't the word I'm looking for. Amazing line. Incredibly badass line from Lady D over here. Cool tattoo you got there. Great tattoo you got there. Please don't tell my wife. Those are your last words. Wouldn't you rather scream? Oh, oh, he got stabbed so fast. Is this dude not gonna put up a fight? Are they just gonna murder Maze Hughes right now? <laughs> Damn it. Oh, never mind. He put up a great fight. Good job, dude. Didn't know you had it in you. Damn it. That's exactly how I feel. Oh, that's tough. Yeah, that big time sucks. Oh my, you're back again already. Who gets to hear about your daughter this time? <gasps> Lieutenant Colonel, you're bleeding. It's nothing. I need a private line. Are we really about to kill this character whose whole personality is outwardly loving his wife and daughter? Is that what's about to happen right now? There's no way this show is that sadistic. It's an emergency! <sighs> I need to ask you to put down the receiver. Oh, this bitch! What is going on? Do not kill this man who has so clearly been written to die. I'm so upset I didn't realize until now that this guy was just a walking literary corpse. He's like a walking two days from retirement trope. This guy loves his family way too much to survive this series, doesn't he? You're observant. I can't believe I forgot. There, how do I look now? <laughs> you already knew it wasn't Lieutenant Ross. Why did the mole startle you? This is not happening. Please tell me I'm hallucinating or something. You really are a smart man, Lieutenant Colonel. Oh my god, this dude is so fucked. He's got the photo out and everything. He's got the photo out in the perfect position for blood to splash on it when he dies. I've got a wife and daughter waiting for me. So the last thing I'm gonna do is die on them. <laughs> Oh, fuck off. You look surprised. <laughs> what the hell are you? Oh, fuck off. Is he dead? Did this guy really just kill him wearing his wife's face? Of course he does. Put him through. Look, Hughes, I don't have time for daughter stories. Please have time for dozens and dozens of daughter stories. This poor man just loves his offspring. You throw away your lives for nothing. Wow. Wow. How dare this show. I can't believe I didn't see this coming a mile away. God damn it. Could he have just been a normal father and resented his wife and kids? I'm not even gonna fucking hug my kid if I have one. I know it'll be safest for everyone that way. Oh man, this is hands down the best apple pie ever. Oh, well at least Edward's enjoying his apple pie. I had such a good time staying with them. They're both really great people. Yeah, but Hughes is obnoxious. He doesn't know when to shut up and he spoils his daughter rotten. Oh god, Ed, what are you doing? Never mind. 
Turns out this show is exclusively sadistic. Why are they putting all that dirt on Daddy? They're burying him, dear. But if Daddy gets buried, then you won't be able to do all his work. Oh my god, have this conversation before you bring your daughter to her fucking dad's funeral. Have some fucking courtesy. Nobody wants to hear the daughter of the deceased learn what death is in real time. <laughs> Daddy said he has a bunch of work he needs to do. No, stop it. Stop putting dirt on him. Daddy! Make your kid watch up or something before you bring her to her first funeral. Jesus Christ. Yeah, I'm fine. Except it's a terrible day for rain. What do you mean? It's not raining. I mean the rain coming out of my eyes. Yes, it is. Oh, oh no, he did mean the rain coming out of his eyes. Oh, poor sweet baby. There's gotta be an officer above me that's ordered him to keep quiet. Most likely someone of senior ranking. It's wild that Fuhrer Bradley didn't invite Mustang into the loop. I wonder if it was because he was part of the Ishavalan extermination, but it just seems weird that Mustang isn't a part of the trustworthy little group that they've created. Doesn't sound like you to mix your public and personal concerns. There's no difference between the two. I will become the Fuhrer of this country, and I will take vengeance for Hughes. Oh, there it is. I think I see what might have gotten Mustang on the Fuhrer's bad side. I'm not sure where all these political aspirations came from, but I'm glad I'm caught up on Mustang's character. And that is episodes 9 and 10 of Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. I almost called it Mustang Brotherhood. Really fucking wild uh, that Maze just died. Maze Hughes, right? Crazy. I'm so excited. The, like, leading question that I am excited to have answered is who the fucking Seven Deadly Sins crew is. Because they're so strange. And I guess maybe not alchemists? Um, but yeah, I am... Despite thinking he didn't deserve to die, I am happy that Hughes died by virtue of it tells us that characters are expendable. That's pretty cool and pretty wild. Like, I don't, I don't, I'm not happy he died in like a, yeah, fuck that guy. I'm just happy for what it means for the show. That's sick. Stakes have been added. Noted. But as always, let me know what you guys thought of these episodes in the comments below. Let me know what you thought of this video as well. And I will see you guys next time. How's it going, boys, girls, and squirrels? And welcome to yet another step on our journey through Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. Bunch of hype stuff is assumedly about to happen, uh, considering we're seemingly about to meet Ed and Al's fighting teacher, which is rad. In the last episode, they were like, maybe we should go see our old, our old combat teacher. And I said, yes, sounds like a great idea. Couldn't think of a more hype suggestion, honestly. So without any further delay, let's get into it. Rush! Yo, look at this place. Just a bunch of robo dudes being robo bros. Rush Valley. Come for the auto, stay for the males. Look, it's the most recent gods model. I never imagined I would behold such a thing with my very own eyes. Do you have to build robo parts? Like this is what I was saying before about creating money. Like what's stopping an alchemist from just making robo parts? I saw Ed turn a cobblestone street into a metal spear once. So it doesn't even need to be the same material. Like, what is the purpose of having engineers? Welcome to the holy land of Automail. This place is bustling. <sighs> I thought Al just said, this place is bussin'. I genuinely thought that's what he just said. I was so ready to be like, this is where that term comes from? Yo, this shit is bussin'. Hey, hold on a second. I'm gonna earn a personal space quitting. No, no, don't, don't do that. So rude, they just want a closer look. Don't be so rude, they just stripped him in public. Two steps into the city and is already getting introduced to some Rush Valley justice. My silver watch. Gun. <laughs> it sounds like you guys had a run in with Panina. Hey, cyborg. You're the guy who ripped all his clothes off. This dude grabs Ed in broad daylight, strips him, and then goes, Sounds like you had a run in with the Rush Valley Chupacabra. Stolen pocket watch, torn clothes. Yep, that's old Choopy for you. That's like me walking up to a stranger and being like, A vampire did that! We 
you see, now I'm conflicted. Because on one hand, this girl's an absolute cutie magoo. Uh, but on the other hand, she runs like a fucking idiot. She runs like a clothespin on legs. Swing your arms, dummy. You're wearing cargo pants. Why are you running like you're holding up an invisible dress? Oh my god! That is insane power! How has Ed ever lost a fight when he can do crazy shit like that? I guess I've only ever seen him fight in crowded cities, so like, maybe he's holding back to keep from destroying them? I just didn't expect him to hunt this girl down with the force of fucking Thanos. I'd like my watch back. That was awesome! How'd you do that, mister? I'm an alchemist! Want more? These are god-tier powers Ed's pulling out right now. I didn't realize his greatest rival would be this pocket watch thief. He just changed the structure of this entire desert. Just make a new pocket watch, dude. <laughs> Quick moving around! What's the matter? Can't catch a little girl? <laughs> I've been waiting for you. Ed and Al are really on their villain arc right now. It's supposed to be terrifying from this girl's perspective. Ed just reshaped the topography of the Earth, and then when she rounds a corner, she's got this seven-foot-tall robot samurai being like, I've been waiting for you. Now, why don't you hand it over? My watch- <sighs> Come on, you can't be too surprised. You've seen the town, haven't you? Oh, never mind. Something tells me she isn't that scared. Oh, and- <laughs> My other leg's got a 1.5 inch can, and what do you think of that? This? This is my new favorite character. One of her legs is a sword, and the other one's a fucking cannon. Get this girl an eye patch, and she'll be one of the most iconic pirates in all of fiction. Oh no, don't look at me, miss. I wasn't the one who made them. I am. <laughs> You really couldn't tell Hephaestus over here was the real engineer? This dude's chin is an anvil. Wait, are you telling me if my auto mail was lighter, I'd grow taller than this? It is a possibility. Whoa, brother, you're so big! You've grown so tall! Wow, okay, that's a cursed image. Keep that arm heavy. I don't want to see Legward Elric joining the cast anytime soon. But are you having a baby? Hmm? Why, yes, I am. Do you think, would it be alright if I touched your tummy? <laughs> Go right ahead. No! Absolutely not! First off, why is Alphonse just on the prowl for a tummy to touch? A woman is with child. I must touch its enclosure. Second, I'm sure he's gentle, but just look at him. Al is one stumble away from deflating this woman's stomach like it's a rotten pumpkin. It's like there's a miracle in your stomach. Yeah. We were inside mom's tummy like this once upon a time, too. I would be so incredibly unsettled if I was in this woman's shoes. It's like there's a miracle in your stomach. We were in mom's tummy once upon a time, too. Please, just, just get away from me. I wound up losing both my legs in the wreck. I couldn't even walk anymore, and I had nowhere to go. It felt like my entire world had come crashing down. I wonder if the voice actress was like, are we... Are we sure these lines are said over this shot of her smiling? I can try and say the lines in a happy tone, but they are not happy lines. You look like the most miserable, pathetic girl in the entire world. Nothing annoys me more than mopers like you. Let me go, you mean old man! Oh, he just fucking scooped this girl! That's like such a crazy way to treat this situation. Imagine walking down the street one day, seeing a crying little girl and just being like, Ugh, guess I have a daughter now. Just, uh... Just a wild combination of emotions to treat this situation with. It's been sealed up using alchemy. Why would he do that? I think I have a pretty good idea why. Something's in here he's too embarrassed to let anyone see! Oh, now we're talking. I used to love lockpicking my sister's diary when I was younger. I'm all for this type of gossipy nonsense. October 3rd, year 11. A date? Here. You should give this back to Ed. Oh, way to go, you dumb bitch. Feel good about yourself now? This was you. This was all you. I told you not to open it. I said it's coming! Whoa, take it easy with this upskirt shot of Winry, guys. What is the implication of this shot? That Winry's birthing the mother? That's what this would mean in like an A24 film. You will give birth to your child. And I, in turn, will give birth to you. So, so you've seen a baby being delivered before? No, I, 
I haven't, but we don't have any other options here. I turned a dog into a cyborg. You think I can't suck a baby out of this broad? Are we sure your friend can handle this? Winry comes from a family of doctors. She grew up reading medical textbooks instead of picture books like most kids her age. None of that was a yes to my question. Brother. No, when it really counts, I can't do anything. Oh yeah? Is this where it really counts? People try to kill you, like, every day and you still hold your own. How often are you gonna find yourself in a situation like this? I feel like it's totally okay for you to not know how to deliver a baby. I didn't realize how angsty and mopey Ed was before I started watching this show. That's so funny. <laughs> it's a baby! Hooray! Yeah, I sure hope it's a baby. Was there a chance something other than a baby was gonna come out? Ma'am, I'm happy to introduce you to your brand new, happy, healthy, little cow. Damn it! I wanted it to be a human baby! Thankfully, this woman got lucky and pulled a five-star baby. Awesome! Awesome, awesome, awesome! Really? Awesome? That's all you can think of to describe this? Uh how else should I describe it? This is the birth of a new life. Yeah, chill out, Winry. He was pretty sufficiently enthusiastic. The woman had a baby. You guys live in a magical world. This is the least cool thing to happen yet. Do you think you could pick me up, please? Huh? <laughs> it's humiliating to be carried by a boy who's smaller than I am. Yo, drop her ass. Ed? Huh? What is it? I saw it. The engraving that's inside your pocket watch. Proud of you, Ed. Oh, uh, no, don't worry, it's nothing. I'll be right there, okay? Panina. Hmm? Hey, Ed! Why'd you go and do that? Damn, Ed is on a warpath. Dude said, I'm done with all the disrespect going on around here. Well, that's it, they're gone. They'll be back. How is Panina not joining the team? This girl is so fucking cool. When Ed gets back, Winry better hook him up with the same cannon leg that she's got. Honestly, I can't believe they introduced the fact that this girl has a cannon in her knee, and Ed is leaving without one. Long time no see! Good to see you. You've grown up a little, huh? He's squishing me. Ed, just take the compliment. This guy basically just called you tall. Looks like you've grown up more than a little. No one's patted my head like this since back before I lost my body. Oh my god, the cheek slits are for blushing! What are these little cheek slits in Al's armor for? Like, the armor has eye holes. Are the slits so your opponent can see you blushing? In case the samurai's gotta pull a quick uwu on the battlefield? All of you bastards in the comments were like, um, actually, it's for superior airflow of the user. Proof! Confirmation! The slits are to a woo! They passed up on a perfect opportunity to have pink glowing out of the holes? But it's fine, I'll take my victories where I can get them. I know that wouldn't make sense, I know Al doesn't have real cheeks, but that's what the holes are for! Hello, my stupid pupil. I hear you've become one of the military's dogs! Oh my god, why does this woman look like one of the Seven Deadly Sins characters? <laughs> Teacher, you see, it's because I'm... Uh... Al? Look at you, you've gotten so big. Oh my god, why does this woman look like an absolute dime? This woman is a walking smoke show, dude. Not feeling well? What are you talking about? I'm perfectly... <laughs> this woman is a walking corpse, dude. You shouldn't exert yourself. How sweet of you to worry, dear. Thank you. Oh, never mind, there goes that fantasy. If her taste in men is that dude, there's no point in me even trying to simp. Someone you know? <laughs> He's our father. The one who ran out on you when you were little? <laughs> yeah, that's the one. No, their other father. The one who stayed and gave them proper love and encouragement. Oh, wait, sorry, I was thinking of a guy who doesn't exist. I'm glad Ed also snapped at her for asking such a stupid question. It's all because of that bastard that our mother's dead. And if it wasn't for him... Wait, I thought they said their mother died of an illness. Unless they meant she came down with a bad case of being murdered. When's he coming back, Mom? <laughs> I'm gonna <laughs> get ya! <laughs> <laughs> but seriously, when's Dad coming back? Oh, 
crazy. Is she the one who taught Ed how to use alchemy by clapping his hands together? Is she the one who's going to teach me how to use alchemy by clapping your hands together? Because I am still holding out for that explanation. Ah, you brat! What about your parents? Um, ma'am, these little ones don't have any parents. Who is this guy? Are you brats? What about your parents? Ah, huh, yeah, I could answer that. These two don't have any parents. I... Who are you? Just the local expositor, ma'am. I handle the town's exposition. Oops, sorry, I have to be on my way. Somebody just asked what alchemy is about three miles to the north. Huh? You two are on your own! Huh? Wow, she really made a big deal about not wanting to train them, considering she was gonna abandon them in a forest anyway. Fine, fine. I'll take up the crushing weight of caring for two young boys. Anyway, you're on your own. I'll be back in a couple of months to collect your corpses. One is all, and all is one. You have one month to figure out what that means. You'd better find the answer in the allotted time. I feel like that's just alchemy, right? Like, transformation? Like, anything can be transformed into one thing, and one thing can be transformed into anything else? Is that the answer? Because I feel like that's gotta be the answer. I'm so hungry. Full Metal Alchemist. Hey, what the fuck? He's supposed to say it twice per episode. Don't start getting lazy on me, announcer. What, are we working with budget cuts or something? What the fuck is that? It's not their education I'm worried about. Their lives could be in danger out there. Also, I'd really appreciate it if you stopped trying to kill me while cooking. You've been throwing knives at my head for weeks. Was it something I said? No way! You take care of it, brother! Catching them is more my area. You always make me do the dirty work. I'm sick of cleaning up your messes, Ed. I'm done being your killer. Box cups, look. Maybe we should just switch to fish. I like how fish are less cute than rabbits and therefore more deserving of death. It's just funny how humans have like a cuteness hierarchy scale when it comes to the animals they'll kill. <laughs> Oh my god, definitely don't eat your little brother. Is this actually how Al lost his body? Like, was all that mom stuff a fake backstory and we're learning the real reason he's in a suit of armor now? Hey! What are you trying to do to me? Oh my god, he actually tried! Holy shit, he bit him so hard! Hey, let's circle back around to the fact that you just tried to fucking eat Al. Al, I'm still alive. I'm alive because I ate the ants. Something tells me Al isn't gonna get an apology for that bite. When you think about it, Al, it's actually a good thing I took a bite out of your arm because it gave me the idea to- Why are you looking at me like that? I'm not really sure about this, but do you remember when I was weak from hunger and I ate those ants? God, we get it. You ate ants. You don't have to make it your whole personality. But it's bigger than that. It's the entire world. The entire universe, even. And compared to something as big as that, Al, you and I are tiny, not even the size of ants. Compared to that, you and I are tiny, Al, not even the size of ants. Like the ones I ate. You remember that, Al? Remember when I ate those ants? Yes! All is the world. And one is me. <laughs> <laughs> Very well. <laughs> but no, seriously, what's your actual answer? Let's see. The circle denotes the circulation of power. In order to call upon and harness this power, one must draw a structural matrix over the circle. Okay. I think I'm getting my explanation. How do you do it? Tell us, teacher. Perhaps it's something you learn when you see the truth. Unhelpful, guys. Although it is pretty crazy that this woman spoke to that godchild like Ed did. So then maybe that's the key. Can only people who have spoken with that child or like been to that realm use like, like clap alchemy? <laughs> Yo. Yo! Did she try to 
fucking do something with her kid. I definitely got the sense that like newborns were a touchy subject in this household when Ed and Al were telling her about the baby they helped deliver. And that bolt of lightning just went straight through her stomach. <laughs> Oh, that's crazy! Holy shit! Yo! Whoa, ho, ho! Oh, that's crazy! That's wicked dark! I committed the taboo. As a result, I lost parts of my inner organs. What an idiot I was. Wow! That's so heavy! This show explores its world in such cool ways. I just got the theme of the show, <laughs> just now, and it's super cool. All these people have near godlike abilities. Like, alchemy is so powerful, it can do almost anything. Yet humans are still unsatisfied because it can't do everything. Like, it's not enough that Ed could change the, like, geography of the Earth with just a clap of his hands. He- it still isn't enough power for him. He still needs to bring the dead back to life. Same with this woman, and same with Shao Tucker, like, that's so cool. It, like, humanity will never be satisfied with how much power they have as long as there is more power to be gained. And that's also cool that, like, makes the previous episode a little better, too, actually. Because I was joking about, like, you know, how over-enthusiastic everybody was at the birth of this kid, and I was like, this is cheesy, and this is dumb, because whatever, the miracle of childbirth, I get it. But now I actually get it. Like, I like that birth, creation of life, is, like, so highly valued. Because, yeah, that's the thing, is that, like, humanity is able to change literally anything about their environment, but they can't change other humans. And that's... They're like, that's, that's their greed. Which I guess makes sense why the villains are like the seven deadly sins. Although, so far I'm only really getting greed. You know, like Ed wants to bring his mother back, but this woman was barren and so she wanted to use alchemy to have a kid, even though like, you know, God says she shouldn't. Shao Tucker wanted to make a chimera talk or and or fuse a human with a with an animal. Again, going against God, but again, kind of greed, I would say. I haven't really seen anyone use like lust or like wrath or whatever the others are. It's been a bit since I've brushed up on my Dante's Inferno. But yeah, that's really good. Th what an episode. What a great backstory. It's okay to hurt. <sighs> Alright, but it's not okay to hurt me. This was fucked. I know, objectively, this is not worse than the Nina episode, but I think this needs to be in the conversation. I only ever hear about Nina when people are talking about Full Metal Alchemist. This... Fox, that's cool. What a god. The world's so cool. The world's so good. All right, anyway, I've said my spiel. I usually say it after I react to all the clips. You got it a little early. Let me know what you guys thought of this video in the comments below. Comment your favorite jokes from this video as well. It helps me make TikToks, YouTube shorts, blah, blah, blah. And yeah, man. Uh, as always, recommend what other shows you'd like to see me react to in the future. And I... We'll see you all next time. How's it going, boys, girls, and squirrels? And welcome back to, like, the darkest mainstream show everybody will recommend, but nobody will warn you about. Everybody's so quick to be like, oh my god, you haven't seen Full Metal Alchemist? Wh are you even an anime fan? Where are the trigger warnings, though, huh? Where- where's the, hey, this show's great if you don't like dogs and children. This show's awesome, but watch out for that alchemist abortion episode. I'm just saying, 
This community is very whack about the details it will and will not share with newbies. Thankfully though, this show has been just as good as people have been telling me it will be. And what's especially exciting about that is that most people have been saying that this show doesn't really start getting good until halfway through. Which is crazy. Uh, because I love it so far. But I'm excited to see how it could possibly get any better, so let's start making our way towards the middle. Feel free to drop by if you're ever in town. I'm not so sure about that. I love seeing Al use his massive, imposing, armored body to pout. It's like seeing Sauron be like, well, I don't want to go to bed early. Teacher? <laughs> What the hell are you doing coming back here? Don't worry, I'm pretty sure that just means she likes you. At least I hope it does for her husband's sake. Al, you didn't see the truth, did you? No, I don't really even know what that means. Nah, no idea what that means. Oh yeah, we only exchanged parts of our bodies for what we saw, but Al paid the toll with his entire physical being. He must have seen more of the truth than either of us did. Yeah, still completely in the dark here. <laughs> Dang. What, is it something bad? No, it's more like awful. Yeah, I'm horrifying. Well, is there a sea monster in the Shadow Realm? Why did you both turn into squids? I don't remember tentacles being involved in either of your visions. The rumors are true. He's able to transmute human souls. Oh my god, hello, lizard man. I would love if him being a lizard had nothing to do with alchemy. So, you transmuted yourself with a lizard to gain its healing properties. But in exchange, you became a disgusting, horrible freak. No, actually, uh, I was just born like this. Yeah, no, sometimes this just happens, uh, not entirely sure why, but, you know, thanks for calling me a disgusting freak. Well, all of your hard work has made my life easier. Finally got to relax. Nice giant Matryoshka dolls in the corner there. Sometimes I like to just climb inside of these and feel like a little babushka. Checkmate. Ah! It took me long enough to beat you. These are mine now. I've beaten you fair and square, old man. And by state alchemist laws, that means your chess playing days are over. Next, I'll be coming for your matryoshkas. And no objections. Understood. <coughs> I've got a problem, sir. I said no objections! Whoa, I love this weird mangled dumbbell he alchemied. This dude's on that Barney Rubble regiment. This is the most Flintstones looking thing I've ever seen. Anybody home? Would you look at that? He really is here. He's got the scar and everything. Looks like you got yourself a deal. We'll split the bounty three ways with you. Well, wasn't expecting a couple of New Jersey bikers to show up in Afshmanistan, but okay. Yoki, how could you do something like this? We took you in and treated you like family when you had nowhere else to go. Just shut up. I never even wanted anything to do with you, Ishvalen. You guys are surprised Waluigi over here betrayed you? This dude looks like he's on his way to go terrorize Lazy Town. You lost your war, but I'll rise again. I'll rise up. I will rise, and I'll use my power to annihilate Edward Elric! Who is this man? Is it- is this a guy I should know? I swear to god I've never seen this guy in this show before. I've seen him before in Lazy Town! It's obvious that I only bring more trouble if I stay here. Well, thanks for making this easy, pal. Oh! Oh, that poor man was so genuine! He was so appreciative! And Scar betrayed him. He was just like, hey, thanks for making this easy, pal. And then Scar gave God a fucking refund on this guy's arm. He's here. <clears throat> there you are. About time. Look at this fucking Naruto extra over here. This guy's the lamest looking ninja I've ever seen. He looks like a bootleg toy you find at the Dollar Tree. Why don't you come with us? But my teacher always said I'm not supposed to go with strangers. <laughs> How old are you? Fourteen. That was a great camera angle for that response. Yes, and you can start by coming with- So I thought it over for myself, and I decided that I should just make you tell me what I want to know. God, I fucking love Al. Unironically, no exaggeration or anything, already one of my favorite characters in all of anime. Like, no hyperbole, Al is one of my favorite characters. I feel like we should start saying no hyperbole the way people used to say no homo. Yo, I ain't even being hyperb about this, I just fucking love you, dude. Sorry to drop in. Oh! 
Oh, she just slipped right inside of him. Oh, you're inside me? Hey, be a good boy and hold still. No! So what's it like having someone control you from inside? Oh, God, she's wearing Al. Horrible. This is horrible, traumatizing stuff going on right now. Al's gonna walk away from this fight a changed person. It's gonna find him in the corner of his room just like, I didn't know somebody even could wear me. It never occurred to me that Al could be worn like a suit of armor. Because why would I think about that? Good guess. They're chimeras. And they happen to work for me. Also, Shao Tucker must have really sucked as an alchemist. All of these chimeras are like leagues better than anything he worked on. Huh? Cool. You're actually hollow. The name's Greed, and I want to be your friend. Oh my god, this guy's like a real antagonist? I thought this was like a side villain. All of these character designs just scream filler enemies. I would argue this is the main antagonist, considering this show's main theme seems to be greed. I'm a homunculus. A homunculus? You know what that means, right? I'm an artificially created human. <sighs> really? No joke. Whoa, what? Wait, so all the Seven Deadly Sins characters are made from alchemy? That's crazy. Oh man. Yes, I gotta prove it. <gasps> wow, graphic demonstration. <gasps> God, Al is having a fucking nightmare day. God forbid this kid tries to take a walk on his own without ending up in a Stephen King novel. I'm a little surprised you would have such a hard time accepting that, considering you're just a soul in a suit of armor. Who told you that? Al, a woman is wearing you right now. I don't think it's very hard to piece together what your situation is. Let me explain. See, I'm greed. I want everything you can think of. Money and women. Power and sex. Status. Glory. Money and women. Power in men. Status in non-binary folks. Trans femme. Trans mask. I want to have sex with them all. Are you sure you're not lust? I'm horny. In return, all I ask is you teach me how to transmute a soul. Classic equivalent exchange. This guy sounds like the worst undercover cop. Hmm. <laughs> Classic equivalent exchange. We're all about that, right, fellow alchemists? Shut up! Right. You're joking, right? You don't need to eat. You don't need to sleep. You don't even need to use the toilet. Sounds great to me. Honestly, I still kind of agree. That's enough. Shut your damned mouth! Super weird of you to wait such a long time after he stopped talking to tell him to shut up. Hey, you are! Drop him! Awesome fight choreography. Oh, that was sick. That crazy animation and choreography came out of nowhere. It was like the highest quality animation this show has had to offer so far. Also, this is a wild power coming out of nowhere from this guy, too. Oh, you're one of those guys. You don't care if somebody beats the crap out of you, but if someone lays a finger on a family member, you completely freak out. Damn, really coming for Ed's protagonist complex. So I try not to wear it that much. I wasn't kidding, kid. Try all you like, but you're not gonna beat me. Oh my god, what? This dude is nuts! Okay, so there are people with just straight-up powers. Like, straight-up, non-alchemist-related powers then, right? But for now, I guess I'll assume that they have to be homunculi to have them. You dead yet? <laughs> there you go. You're chock full of piss and vinegar! Ugh, don't tell people they're chock full of piss. It'd be so much easier if you just... STAY DOWN! <laughs> oh, that looks so painful! Oh, he fucking punched spikes between his knuckles. What a psychopath that is. So it's obvious that's what your shield is made of. Once I got that figured out, the rest is simple alchemy. <laughs> Ed, I think, I think you got a little more... Uh, blood. Uh, you know what? Worry about it after. You asked what I am. A housewife! I love this show. Is the next one another fight episode? Because I absolutely hope it is. That was fucking sweet. That was the best fight in the whole show by leagues. 
<sighs> Something doesn't smell right to me. You know what it feels like to me? Old times. But what does it smell like to you? What an interesting discovery for such a routine inspection. Oh damn, alright Fuhrer Bradley, go off King. Fuhrer Bradley? We're like Fuhrer had me at hello. Dude's over here busting out of his suspenders wearing a shirt that looks like it's painted onto him. <laughs> a housewife and a hot-headed brat, what a team. Though to be honest, it's not one I'm particularly interested in fighting. Well, there goes my second fight episode. <laughs> Will you stay put? Quit struggling! I oh. don't wanna... <laughs> I hope state alchemist health insurance covers a good therapist. Oh. Huh? Just what do you want, old man? Oh, it's the Fuhrer! Why is he here? God, look at him with his six swords! This dude is the fucking man! Are we sure his name is Fuhrer King Bradley? Are we sure people haven't just been saying, You're a King Bradley? Huh? This year marks my 60th birthday. It's frustrating how your body stops moving the way you want it to. Oh, all right, we love a withered king. <gasps> well, look at this. The old man's got some moves. <laughs> wow, wow, Bradley is so fucking cool. Let's go, my fight episode's back. Oh my god, what a flex on your opponent. Is that how alchemists teabag on their enemies? They turn their weapons into merch? Behold! You have just had the rare pleasure of witnessing the famous Armstrong statuary technique. Alright, well it's still a mace, don't throw it away. If anything, it'd be pretty badass to beat Armstrong to death with a statue of himself. <laughs> Oh shit, he's using his cow strength. He has all the abilities of a bovine. Which are... Not plentiful. Oh, I hate to be that guy. What animal is he combined with? Alf? To rise to my current position. You... you are... Oh shit, he's a homunculus! Oh my god, wait, that's crazy! He's even kind of dressed like them! Yo, that's wild! That's cr- I can't believe that he's kind of dressed like them, too. I can't believe I didn't pick up on that. He, like, kind of is wearing their color palette. No, great! Oh. Quiet! Let me out! Come on, damn it! No way! I said open up! I can't, he'll kill you! What? Why are you trapping this woman inside of your body now? What do you care if she dies? Or is Al just taking like a moral stance against his woman wearing him? You wanna hop inside of me, bitch? Good luck getting out! Al's all like, you're not wearing me, lady. I'm containing you. <laughs> do us a favor, kid, and get her out of here. <laughs> Protect her. Why? When did Al join their side? This is coming completely out of nowhere. I guess he just doesn't like killing. I guess that's the motivation going on right here. He just, regardless of side, if he can, if he can save someone from being killed, he'll do it. Don't shut up, no! <laughs> really, really cool stuff happening here. Just, just some, just some real great stuff going on right now, guys. <laughs> Yo, this show is so fucking cool. This camera angle is so sick. I love how Bradley's just depositing swords into this guy like he's a fucking steel bank. It's turning this dude into a fucking multi-sword sheath right now. I also, like, don't care about this reveal about Bradley. Not that it's a very cool reveal, but it in no way changes my opinions on him. I absolutely do not care that he's going on a murder spree right now. I don't care that he's a homunculus. He's fucking sick. He's the coolest character in the show. Thanks, but I'm all right. <laughs> Mortal! Don't do this! You know, just because you're done assaulting Al, doesn't mean you can assault with him. Die, Bradley!
Wow. Wow. If today wasn't traumatizing enough for Al, how does this whole experience not just emotionally ruin him? I'll be surprised if Al ever speaks again after this episode. A woman just exploded inside of him. And you know, usually, that's supposed to be the other way around. That's a gross joke. <laughs> That's one of those ones where I just cross all my fingers and toes and hope it's well received. Ow! Wake up! Ow! Say something! Yo. Did Al become their mother's fucking corpse? Oh my god, is this like a Soma thing? Like the video game Soma? So... So is this Al a copy? Is that still... A relevant theory going on? Or did some of Al's soul go into their mother's body? I don't know. I'm very confused, but in a very exciting way. Let me be more specific. If you arranged a deal or shared any knowledge with him, then I'll execute both of you right now. Okay, well saying you're gonna kill them if they answer yes is a terrible way to get a truthful answer out of them. Is there any connection between the two? <laughs> <laughs> you really are an honest kid. Stop fucking with them. Why are you so sinister? Think back. The Fifth Laboratory? The Philosopher's Stone? Remember the guys I told you and Colonel Hughes about? Uh, Colonel Hughes? I... Oh, God, I forgot to. Listen, Edward Ulrich. Uh, do not do anything rash. Oh my god, he isn't even gonna tell him? Is everybody really going to let Ed keep thinking that Hughes is alive? Horrible. Terrible decision. I do not approve. Welcome back, Fuhrer. How was your inspection of the South? To say the least, it was a very productive visit. Oh my god, what? Bradley's working with the homunculi? Also, what is this fucking H.R. Geiger lair he's in? Maybe, but you never do, lust the lascivious. Feel free to pierce me with your ultimate spear anytime you want. Pfft, amen, brother. And where is Sloth the Indolent these days? I'm sure he'd love to be here slacking off, but we have to keep him working. That Sloth? It's just a humongous jealousy! Who's the new addition? I am Wrath the Furious. Fuhrer, King, Bradley, and Wrath, one and the same. Oh my god, is that why he's a Fuhrer? Fuhrer the Furious? Is that a pun? I love that Bradley is Wrath. This is such an amazing twist. As you wish. <laughs> All of this is wild. This is a mind-blowing exposition dump going on here, while also giving, like, almost no information away. I feel closer to understanding what's going on with the homunculi, while also feeling like I have no idea what's going on. I feel like I am miles away from the full truth, which is a great way to do, like, an episode 14 revelation. You know, like, I'm satiated, I've got a lot to chew on right now, but still, a lot more to learn later. Jeez. Talk about cheesy. <laughs> wow. Wow. He deserves to die for that one. Jeez. Talk about cheesy. Oh! Oh, it hurts! Oh, it hurts! I'd say it was productive at the very least. I'd do as you would act your age, darling. Why couldn't you just retire and try to enjoy some peace and quiet for a change? Oh god, is this gonna be fucked? This is incredibly fucked. And if he can learn alchemy at his age, then maybe I can too! Why would you want to learn something like that? So I can wield the power of God at my fingertips, Mom! And that is episode 14 and 13 of Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. Maybe the best batch of episodes? I really liked the previous batch. Um, because of the teacher's backstory. And the Shao Tucker one is obviously iconic, but I'd seen it before, so obviously it didn't have a huge impact. I didn't- I didn't know the fights would be this good. I didn't know they were capable of getting as good as they were in this- in this batch of episodes. And also, my favorite character just got way cooler. Bradley is so sick. He's so sick, and now he's, like, one of the antagonists. God, this show is fucked. I can't believe they have him just, like, go back home. 
to some some wife and kid i don't know what the deal is here god it's super good though it's really cool uh but anyway as always let me know what you guys thought of this video in the comments below let me know what your favorite jokes from the video were as well and i will see you guys next time how's it going boys girls and squirrels and welcome to a temporary new era of my channel a temporera if you will an era in which tom no longer edits for me for for about two months and instead it's my roommate josh well, I'm very embarrassed to give the raw footage of my videos to. Everybody say hi to Josh. Josh, say hi back. Now, Josh is a little inexperienced with my content. Josh is a little inexperienced with my content. So, I'm gonna give you a little quick rundown before we begin. Now, I make highbrow content, okay? Real subtle, real intellectual stuff is going on here. So since it can be hard to pick up on my subtleties when, when I'm about to make a reaction or give a joke, I'll, I'll give you a signal, alright? I'll do this. That way there's a seamless transition between the show and my color commentary. It is unfortunate uh, that you'll be diving into episode 15 of Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood, because this show is amazing. It's really cool, uh, and it's only getting better, and I'm very excited to see how it progresses. So. Enough of this conversation, uh, solely between me and my editor. Let's invite everybody else into the circle and get into the reaction. So you dare to challenge Giolo Comanche, the silver alchemist, to battle, do you? Don't get too cocky, buddy. You don't have the design of a character who sticks around for very long. I don't know who told Mr. Monopoly over here that he was the protagonist of this show, but it was a pretty cruel prank. This guy did not just turn into a flying dreidel. Who is this One Piece character? Nobody else in this entire show has powers this goofy. No chance Jewish Colonel Sanders just landed a hit on Scar. That's so embarrassing. Anytime this show tries to convince me that Scar is a badass, I'm gonna remember that this guy was kind of a match for him. Are you serious right now? Do we really change the opening theme song? What was perfect not good enough for them? The last theme song went so hard. Why would they change it? Not as good. Definitely not bad but certainly not as catchy or memorable as the first song. I will say that the animation is maybe better in this one, like, the visuals on display might be cooler. But even then, I kind of miss, like, Winry getting knocked over by a gust of wind in the original. Like, uh, the original one had it all. I said, who is this? Pleased to meet you. My name is Mei Chang, sir. Look, I don't really have a joke for this girl's introduction, but I have been sitting here for quite a while weighing whether or not it would be wrong to mention Ni Hao Kailan. Because she doesn't really look like Kailan, but for some reason it is the energy she's giving off. In the same way that the other guy was giving Colonel Sanders. And honestly, it's mainly because of this little cartoon panda sidekick. I don't know why this episode's introducing the cartooniest characters in the entire series. Not to mention they got her standing next to the Lazy Town villain over here. It's like the whole Nick Jr. squad rolled up for this episode. No, I wasn't alone! I had her with me, too. <laughs> oh, he hates it. Oh, I wonder if he thinks the panda's a chimera. That's incredible. Your brother must have really been something. I think I understand why Scar usually keeps his glasses on. Scar is a much cooler nickname than Mr. Tiny Eyes. You mean all that immortality stuff you were blabbering about earlier? There's no such thing. Yes, there is! And I came here to find it! Oh, shut up! Kids don't know anything! You sure you want to grill this kid about being immature? You're the one screaming at a child. Oh, don't be ridiculous. There's no such thing. Yes, there is! Shut up! You don't know anything, you stupid child! We see his hair and his eyes are golden like the sun. He wears a dashing red coat as he strides forth to save people in need. How does that almost look like Ed? Like, that's so weird. It's almost an optical illusion how much it does and doesn't look like Edward. The terrible serial killer feared by all. Bury the chopper! Oh my gosh, she just unloaded a full gun into him. No fair! What do you have to pull a gun for? Oh, second gun! All right, that's it, lady. Now I'm gonna hear you scream! 
God, I love Barry. Were you the one who did it? Phone booth doesn't sound familiar. Was he all chopped up? Actually, he was shot in the head. Who do you think I am? Barry shoots you in the head? I'm Barry the Chopper. All chopped up is sort of my thing. Hi, Ed. Hi, Al. <laughs> what are you doing showing up like this? <laughs> Go to a better mechanic. All right, I've done all I can for now. <laughs> Thanks, Winry. I'm missing some parts, so you'll have to make do with a patch job. Some parts? It doesn't look like you replaced anything. The arm looks smaller and more beat up than when he brought it to you. Yeah, how do we do that in a town made up entirely of auto mail shops? <clears throat> I'd love it if it just cuts to a bunch of people, like, pulling Al apart, and he's like, Brother, help! They're trying to use me for parts! What now? Did you find a stray cat or something? Uh, well, no. I, uh, sort of killed this guy. I don't know, you left me alone and I sort of just spiraled into a blind rage. I'm sorry. North of us is the huge country, Drachma. We have a tentative non-aggression pact with them and Briggs Mountain stands between us, making invasion difficult. Weird of you to bring up the political situation between your country and Drachma completely unprovoked. Especially considering it's the first time I'm hearing about this country, and as far as I can tell, it's completely unrelated to the current plot. It was just a strange, like, entirely unnatural piece of world building that I'm hoping will come up again later. It would be so wild if he was just like, we have incredibly tense relations with the country Drachma, and then it never arises again in this series. Well, see, I'm looking for something. It's possible you two have heard of it before. The Philosopher's Stone. I, like, can't get a read on this guy at all. His character design says good guy, but this ominous music is telling me bad guy. No, we can't help you. Hmm. You wouldn't be lying to me now, would you? <laughs> oh, well, that helps. Never mind, cool. I've gotten my read. Bad guy. Off they go. Hey, Pops, let's add some dessert to my tag. Sure. What an asshole. Well, if I can't physically cripple them, I'll cripple them financially. Oh my god, great weapon, terrible hoodie accessory. Remember when we used to chew on our hoodie strings in school? I feel like you don't want to buy a sweatshirt that comes with the risk of slicing your tongue off. What are you guys after? You and your boss with the freaky closed eyes. They can see when characters have their eyes closed? I always thought that was a stylistic thing. I didn't know their eyes were actually closed. So is Brock just walking around Kanto completely blind? Either that, or Ed's racist. Now then, I think it's about time for me to have a look at your face. A girl? Ed, the racism already wasn't a good look. You really want to trade that for sexism? Not too bad, considering it was my first time. It's Alka's Street. Oh shit, way to go, Al! Look at you learning clap alchemy. I also love this world building where Eastern alchemists have different terms and uses for alchemy. Like, I love how they call alchemy circles arrays and alchemy alkahestry, and they use it for healing instead of combat. Like, that that's some super cool world building. It really makes a world feel like huge and actually diverse, you know? Now, I wonder how things are going on Brother's End. Danny Mata here reporting on Brother's End, and I gotta say, Al, not good. Hey, girly! Really doubling down on that sexism thing, huh, Ed? Also, why even bother going to Winry anymore? She literally repaired it this episode, and it's already completely destroyed again. I mean, at this point, just be a guy with one arm. This just can't be financially viable anymore. Okay, good work, guys. <sighs> Why, you? What are you so chipper about? You guys have got some pretty impressive skills. Kick this guy's ass. One of his goons just set off a bomb in the middle of town. Why isn't Al using this dude's skull as a sock? And that means... Hey guys, can I get some subtitles over here? No? I just don't get to be in on the joke? Cool, fuck you too. So, where are you headed to break your auto mail this time? Well, it's not like Winry makes them to last. You guys are going back to Central? I wanna come too, take me with you. What do you wanna go there for? <laughs> I 
like to go see the Hughes family again. You wanna do what? Pump the brakes on this plan. This is a terrible plan. Mm -hmm. It's okay if you want to go, Winry. You should take a break every once in a while. Oh, really? Thanks so much, Mr. Garfield. Who the hell is this? Do I know this guy? Has he been in any other episode? Something about this country doesn't feel right. Something about this whole country? All right, damn, now who's racist? Although I guess if this country is a parallel of 1914 Germany, well, he may be onto something. Here, it's from the Colonel. Huh? Hey, it's the smoking guy! Damn, they're treating this guy so well. This is not so bad being a state alchemist prisoner. Hold it, I found myself a girlfriend! <laughs> oh boy, is she hot! Hey, do you think this new girl would be fun to cut up? Oh, what a lovable mass murderer. You just never know what Barry's gonna say next, that rowdy scamp. Maybe I should wear her skin. <laughs> oh, that's so Barry. I'm pretty sure Hughes said he was in the court-martial office. Hmm. Oh yeah, is that what he said? Oh god, I'm not looking forward to this. Is this whole episode just gonna be a slow unwinding of them learning that Hughes is dead? Cause that's not cool. So stop it. <laughs> this show is such a bastard. What an asshole this entire series is being right now. Um, excuse me. Colonel? Colonel Mustang? It's funny how this show keeps being like, oh man, Mustang never gets a chance to sleep. But every time we see him, he's sleeping in the office. I get that the idea is that he's working so hard, he never gets to go home and get some rest. But when we keep seeing him sleeping, it gives off the impression that all he has time to do is sleep. I see this dude fucking sleeping way more than I've ever seen him working. As far as I can tell, this guy's a part of the State Alchemist Snooze Patrol. Uh, Colonel, perhaps this is none of my business, but but maybe you should try to get a little more rest. What do you think he was just doing, Cheska? Imagine somebody waking you up in the middle of your nap to tell you that you should sleep more. Let me know in the comments how fast you're strangling that person. Was that Colonel Mustang that just left? <laughs> Oh, Captain Falker, sir! My, you sure are looking... offensive this morning. Huh? Yo, can we get some better security in here? The homunculi are just constantly waltzing in and out of this precinct. No issues at all. Every person who enters into this place should have to sign in to say that they are the person who entered. So then if you get somebody trying to sign in as Roy Mustang, when Roy Mustang has already signed in, you know something's up. We're just doing a little information gathering. And we were thinking that we'd pay Lieutenant Colonel Hughes a visit a little later today. Where is he anyway? Hughes? I don't... No, 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 I don't, I don't think I know a Hughes. Uh, Colonel Hawkeye, do you know a Hughes? No, yeah, me neither. Didn't, didn't think so. <laughs> Come on, Ed, what are you talking about? Qu quit talking so crazy. I should have you arrested for making up such crazy stories. G guards, arrest him. Uh, arrest him. Guards, execute him. I think, I think I handled that well, Hawkeye. Not here. Huh? He retired out in the country. Oh, imagine if he retired out in the country. And took his wife and daughter with him. Imagine if he retired out in the country and took his wife and daughter with him. It's funny. I've accused Armstrong of being soft. You did what? You called Armstrong soft? That man is single-handedly keeping this town's gym in business. Armstrong is the densest man in human history. We weren't able to reach you. Don't worry, though. The military gave him a proper send-off. Wow, that was nice. Get out of there, Ross! Not the Brigadier General? He retired to the country and they promoted <gasps> him? <laughs> Poor Ross is just like, what do you mean he retired? Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, I mean, I mean, yeah, he retired. Retired from living, working! He retired from working! <laughs> I'm waiting for Mustang to run up and be like, by the way, if you see the Elric brothers, don't tell them that he was died. Died. D don't tell them that he died, because he didn't. So why would you say that? No, not the lieutenant colonel. Why him? <laughs> say something, Ross. Say it's not his fault. It's all my fault. I'm the one who pulled him into this. It's all my fault. Why does Ross still work here? Daddy? <laughs> 
Oh! Has this bitch still not seen up? But you know, I don't think he ever had regrets. Not any. Not even in his dying moments, Edward. <laughs> he seemed like he'd super have preferred not to have been killed at the time. Maybe getting shot by somebody who looks exactly like his wife. He probably regretted that quite a bit. Honestly, I think his final moments were the ones he regretted most in his life. Mommy? <laughs> Mommy, please don't cry. <laughs> Can somebody get this kid out of the house? Get this kid to a zoo or something. She's way too young to be experiencing all of this. That's right. I've practiced making it a few times. I know it might sound like I'm bragging, but I've gotten pretty good at it. Hey, nobody's gonna accuse you of bragging right now. This is a really weird time to worry about being humble about your apple pie baking skills. I hope that Mr. Hughes I get to try some too! Yep, see, there's another regret to throw in the pile. <sighs> so the nosy Colonel Mustang is snooping around the Hughes matter? Why are you using this man as a chair? His name's Gluttony, not Love Seat. Haven't been able to learn anything from your new boyfriend? Nothing. He's either a born idiot or a clueless hustler. I thought the implication was that her and Gluttony were dating. That, that is what I thought was being implied by that cut to Gluttony there. Second Lieutenant Maria Ross, I'm Henry Douglas from the Provost Marshal's office. Jesus, what did this guy eat, Shao Tucker? Why does he look like a roided out version of him? You've been waiting long, Solaris? Oh no, I just got here. Lost is the girl this guy's dating? What a pull! This dude hopped on Tinder and pulled a mythic rare. What a guy! And that is episodes 15 and 16 of Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. This whole episode is like, like four content creators, seemingly. Like, you know how a video game will come out and people will be like, this is just a game for streamers. Like, it doesn't actually look fun. It's just something that streamers will play and get millions of views for, for like a week, and then it'll die. That's what this feels like. The whole episode is just like everyone dancing around telling Ed and Al and Winry that Hughes is dead and then the slow unraveling of that. Um, this is an episode for reaction content, which is very funny. But yeah, as always, uh, very good. I love, I love, it's like such a weird like weaving plot full of conspiracy and like mistrust which is not entirely what I expected. Not usually what you get from shonen anime. Like, you usually don't get, like, these big government conspiracies in this kind of stuff, at least from what I've seen. But as always, uh, let me know in the comments what your favorite jokes from this video were. Let me know uh, what you thought of these episodes, and let me know what you thought of Josh's editing. And I will see you guys next time. Hold on to me, baby. Won't you come a little closer where I live for now? I